on everybody welcome to red shirts remastered i am chris and as usual joined by that guy who flies below me patrick what's up patrick what's up and chris? then to How you doing, man? my i guess on your screen he's on my right but to me he's on my left the dingus himself Spencer, what's up, man? The wild dingus. A wild dingus has a wild dingus is here. And then the right? wise exactly. one. No, exactly. no, no, no. You're not. Well, yeah, you are wild. You are a dingus. But let's see what the wise one diagonal from me has to say. The sage of Geo. Geo the sage. What's up, man? What's good, everybody? Yeah, go by the name of Geo the sage. If you don't know, now you know. And, uh, I'm, and then you I'm know, and you well. know, and you know, and you know. <laughs> or do you know? Or do doing you well? Know? Are we Glad to be here on yeah. this uh, on this special evening. Special, special. Why is it special, guys? Uh, if you go on to our Twitch, there's a little oh, button yeah. now that says subscribe. We are now affiliates on yeah, Twitch, and we couldn't have done it without any of you. And Thank all you, of you are gloomy. Special <laughs> button. <laughs> special button. Hey, and I'm Matthew Coburn. All right as button. I say it, Shane. Yeah. Right as I say it. <laughs> so Matthew, <laughs> da dude, has helped us get there for sure by being a great supporter. Oh, always yeah. being in the Lots chat. Of stuff. We yeah. are finally, finally, finally. Affiliates of Twitch. We're still small fries. But. Small fish in the pond. Small fish in a pond. But if you have. Amazon Prime. You can use your free. Prime sub. The sub to Red Shirts Remastered. So it costs please, you nothing. Uh, but uh, you nothing. it will. It will give uh, give us. Essentially free yes. money. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Free, free money. money for us. Get those Bezos dollars. Just yeah, uh, one thing to keep in mind about that. One thing I, that I wish I would have known when I first got uh, uh, Twitch Prime is that it's not a continuous sub. You have to re resub every yes. month. Which is, I think, yes. for the benefit of like if you want to use it for a, a, a different streamer mm -hmm. every month. Um, but yeah, just, uh, for anybody that, uh, isn't aware of that. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's exactly right. Absolutely. That's a, that's a very good point. Well, but cause I, I remember I tried, we have this. I'm sorry. I was just going to oh, say, God. I tried, I tried to sub to somebody with it when I first got it. And then, uh, like three months later, I was like, oh yeah. So I've been subbed to you for a few months now. He's like, yeah, no, you haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, sorry. It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, boy. So, that being said. That being said, it's very easy to do the Prime Sub. You know, all you have to do is you just have to click that little button there. Uh, you know, there's a little toggle option to use your Prime Sub. You can just do that. Exactly like that. Highly uh, illogical. It works exactly like that. It's like this, it's like that, it's like this, it's like that. And there's a cat in the chat. Exactly. And... Hey, cat. Yeah. Great to see you. Great cat to see you here. Chat. We love cat. Cat is the best. <laughs> yep. I hope you have been feeling it's well, great to cat. See you here. I hope you have been feeling okay yeah. recently and then your health has been holding up. Um, mm -hmm. it's been a crazy couple of months for myself health wise. So mm -hmm. we'll catch up sometime. Hey, and there's a, and we John. got a John in the chat too. Oh my God. There's a John. John's here. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, guys. Shout Let's out to rock, John from yeah. nerd reactor. Nerd reactor. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Hizzo. Great to see everybody coming by. Appreciate it. All of you. Oh, no cat. She said she said she got a double ear infection. Oh, that Ooh, that's brutal. We hope you start. Yeah, that is. 
Oh man, That's yeah, I know rate. you deal with that shit a lot. So a double one, oof. Yeah, I am sorry. Up two for the price of one better. I am sorry, Miss Lady Cat. That sucks. Yep, yeah. So yeah, hope you feel better for sure. For Absolutely. Sure. But uh, I believe we're here for a very exciting show as well. You know, not only are we celebrating our. Uh, now that we're finally at affiliate, which I'm, you know, so happy to be up to this point to at least earn, I don't know, change. But <laughs> we also have a show to run here as well, right? Yeah. Believe it or not. <laughs> it's right. hard to believe we're on episode four tonight, fellas. Right? We are four episodes in now. Well, That's a whole month, guys. We that is. It. This is our first official month of the pod. <laughs> that is. Completed in the books tonight. Yes, I guess yes. when you put it put it in perspective like that, it uh, it really um, it's kind of coming along pretty nicely. You cannot uh, complain with that kind of progress. And we probably put in. I think by the time we finish this up tonight, we'll have probably close to what five and a half six hours of content for the whole month, just for the podcast alone. Closer yeah, to not, eight. not counting all the uh, gaming Closer streams and yeah, uh, not counting the gaming stuff. The additional streams we did. Yeah. But yeah, we have a. Uh, uh, I want to welcome new first time yeah. chatter, Marie. Yeah, Thank you very much in. for coming yeah, by yeah. and wishing us congratulations. Great to see you here, as always. Always. Uh, Is oh, that great Marie? To see Marie? Everybody, bye. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's Nicole. Okay, she's over from the Use and Abused. Podcast, ah, and there's the using abuse also podcast here as well. Right there. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, that also he also because that so that'll be uh, Scott there. So thank you very much for coming by. I really appreciate you all coming by. And uh, yeah, awesome, awesome. Thank you all so much for coming by. It means a lot. Absolutely. And so uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess let's just go in. ahead and, as I say, let's go ahead and jump in. Patrick, you're first with our uh, beginning bit here where we do our picks of the week, where we talk about just whatever has been our main thing that I, I guess our past big highlight of something that we've uh, consumed over the past week, whether it's game, movie, yep. TV, something we read, anything at all. Yeah, so for our first-time viewers who are just checking this out, this is our spotlight. We each pick one thing of the week we've done, read, like Spencer said, played a game. We just highlight it, talk about something real quick, and then if we want to you know, add some stuff onto that, we can. So for my first pick of the week, I'm going to go to my old-time classic. You guys are going to be like, boo! But <laughs> I'm going with my usual suspect, Microsoft Flight Simulator. But with one difference this week, gentlemen, I packed four flights into a single day. And nice. I will tell you, it was an experience. Um, I started my first one. It was, uh, I think I was off that night for work. I flew a red, like overnight red eye in the middle of the dark from Atlanta, Georgia to Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, then a few hours later, as the sun was coming up, we made a returning flight from Charleston back into Atlanta, Georgia. And then from there, we did a hop that afternoon up to LaGuardia, New York City. So I got to fly this crazy weird approach I never have flown in New York where you go up the Hudson River and make a right turn in for runway 22. That was really, really fun. I'd never done that one before. Um, and then I did a long hop flight back uh, down to Orlando with my buddy Frank because Frank really wanted to get in on that. So I got to do a group flight for my final flight into Orlando and it was a packed airport. So overall, I had a really good time, four flights in one day. And I was just looking and I, uh, I made a quick graphic so you guys could see the whole route and everything in Sky Vector, which is a wonderful website I use for routing. I basically made... Hold on, let me see here if I can get this to... All right, there we go. So the magenta is my path I took. And we basically... Oh, let me turn down the brightness here. Sorry, gentlemen. The camera picks up a little better. We made a giant number four. Wow. <laughs> and it's just around 2,000 miles. Is about how much I did that whole day. 2,000 miles of flight. So, That's, had a good time. Really enjoyed screen. it. Put that back up on screen. They can't on hear screen? us. On screen? All right. Yes. There you go. Oh, Can you on. make it landscape? Make it so that we, like, it's wide. I won't turn. Not, not, it's a browser. Mobile browser only. 
That's live weather right okay, now, you're good, actually. You're good. There we go, though. Yeah, I made a giant number four, so that was fun. So, all right, that was my pick of the week. Yeah, I just want to tag on that real quick that uh, if you've never seen one of uh, Patrick's flight streams, they're definitely, for someone who, like, I, I've never played the, well, I, I've played some flight sim in the past, but, like, I, I'm not, I don't have the, the latest one. I, I don't play it. Yeah. But when I first saw his, his stream before we all did the Red Shirts Remastered together, that was, I was instantly impressed. And that's some, he's someone who, it, it's very clear that you take it seriously. You know a lot about about flight and about the the mechanics behind it. You know that you're very knowledgeable on the subject, and in it definitely makes for an entertaining stream. So, uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out if you ever catch him doing one of those. And but I Gio, find it hilarious because every Gio time does streaming... have flight sim. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess I I guess I do if it's on uh it it's is. on Game Pass. Game Pass. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah, that's continue. how I played it. But yeah, uh it seems every time I stream I've I've noticed here lately, every time I stream, my landings have not been the less the best lately, Geo. So I gotta work on that on getting better landings on stream. Because every time <laughs> I land for you guys, it's like, oh shit, another light bounce. Fuck. Hey, that's that's part of the ex what makes it exciting, though, right? That's, that's... And, and then as soon as I'm off camera, I'm not streaming. I do another flight. It's like a buttery smooth landing. Oh, like, of why course. Why couldn't I have done that on stream? <laughs> of, of course, that's just the nature of the beast. That's how it's gonna. It's the nature of it all. M M Murphy's it's Law. It's journey. Or... We have a good time. <laughs> and sometimes, and sometimes it's weather, but but most of the time it's Spencer just uh, keeping me on edge. Because Spencer's like, no pressure. Hey, man. No crash. <laughs> Sounds about right. But yeah, lots of awesome, fun times you've had on Flight Sim. Great to hear. Uh, but I guess we could just go ahead and move on. Um, Gio, would you like to talk about your pick of the week? Yeah, sure. So uh, for my pick of the week this week, I'm going with a game called, that uh, you're probably most of you are familiar with at this point, which is uh, No Man's Sky. Now, um, at this point, a lot of people probably, when you first think of that game, what comes to mind is the controversy surrounding it. Um, it came back. It came out uh, back in 2016. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but um, we we all know it. it uh, there was controversy for based on what they the devs promised initially in the game, and then what ended up being in the game when it came mm -hmm. out. And uh, I think if we had, I won't go deep into this, but I think it's it's interesting going in, thinking of uh, looking in the, uh, back at it in retrospect, like in one sense, like I think the team that started the development on that game was just four people. So it's, it, you know, we That's... think we, they can, became the poster child for, you know, devs lying to consumers when, you know, many other companies uh, have, uh, you know, done the same thing as well, but with bigger companies and haven't gotten, the same, workers. Yeah. haven't gotten that same kind of flack. But regardless, you know, there's lots of things we could say about that and um, <laughs> that we don't really have time to get all into it. But uh, I didn't play the game when it first came out, probably, you know, a lot of due, due to that controversy. But looking at the game now, um, if it, you're, anybody's not aware, they've continued development on that game uh, ever since and have applied, like, numerous updates and uh yeah getting game pass recently i was like oh no you know it'd be a good time to try the game out and see how it is because i've heard a lot of good things since the the uh with all the updates like every single one that comes out i i'm hearing more and more praise for the game so i uh yeah i've tried it out and i and i'm i'm very impressed with the state of the game now and i think that's it was definitely beneficial to go in with a slate of not having to judge it on the, on the past versions of the game. I can just look at it in totality of what it is now. And it's, it's a really great game in the sense of it. There's numerous check boxes that it hits. If you are into crafting survival games, it's something you could enjoy. If you're into space and, and uh, exploration, it's, it's a great uh, exploration game. It's, um, Obviously, space travel. Um, if you're into sci-fi, it's uh, numerous alien races and lore behind it. There's uh, there's combat in the game if you're wanting to uh, go that route. So it, there's various different things, and it seems like the more I play it, the deeper it goes. It starts off very uh, 
how do I put this very light in the sense that you're just by yourself. Your first mission is just repairing your ship and getting off your first planet. But if the, the game goes on, it, uh, it, it just, it, it uh, grows and grows. And I think I, I'm not even sure how many hours I am. I'm in now, but it gets to the point where you can eventually get your own uh, space freighter and uh, get like your own fleet. And it's, it just goes deeper and deeper. So I'm, I've been definitely really enjoying that. And I'm, uh, excited to get more into that as time goes on and kind of see how far it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely impressed with the game as it is now. I can say that much. So it's like uh, it's like night and day now, like compared to where they started. <laughs> it's so yeah. far from where they started. So much it better. Really is. Well, I, I've heard some people say as well that there's some stuff that has surpassed their original vision for what they had said prior to launch. So that's that's interesting. I, I think at the end of the day, it's a great comeback story, right? Yeah. Because, you know, it was promised to be a great game. It came out, and I play, I tried the game at launch, and I was like, holy crap, this is awful. And then coming back to it uh, two, three years ago, and even then it was, like, really good. And since then, over just those past two, three years, they've added a whole lot to the game. It's great to see all the effort they've put into it, and it's really paid off for them. The ultimate comeback story. Yeah, um, it really is. Uh, John comp- says, "Now imagine that for Cyberpunk." Yeah, and that'd be interesting to see what they do continue to do with Cyberpunk because it's only been like what a year for a Cyberpunk. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a bit mm-hmm. more longer That's, than that. I think this December will be two years now, right? Twenty. This December will be two years, I think. Two years. Twenty twenty one? No. Twenty twenty one. It feels yeah. like yeah. No, yeah. I got Cyberpunk in when yeah. I was still in Florida. No. So and, and yeah, and uh, No Man's Sky in Maybe comparison is uh, No Man's Sky is seven years in now, which is like crazy yeah. to think that it's mm-hmm. been that long. But, yeah. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see. Yeah, I, I, I believe uh, did they announce DLC for Cyberpunk, or am I thinking of yeah, yeah. yeah. Liberty next, next month, pretty soon. Next month, I believe. Phantom Liberty. Or end of this month, next month. No, it's next month, like right around No Man's Sky launch. So it'd be definitely interesting Around, to see uh, if they be, continue that uh, that route. Yeah. 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 What were you gonna say, Patrick? Anyway. Uh Chris said around the launch of No Man's Sky, and I think he meant. No, uh, I said Starfield. Star. I meant Starfield. Yeah, yeah. Starfield. Yeah, yeah. Really launched Starfield. Yeah. Well, that's but, one of the things I think right. that got me excited to, to play it as well. Is uh, it's, if you're looking for something to hold you over until Starfield yeah. comes out, that's something I would recommend as well. Is is it's uh, it's got a lot of those same trappings to kind of get you excited for for uh, for Starfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to get back into No Man's Sky. I've been taking a break from it for a while. Oh, same. It, it, we it, should it all play from, together. But like in terms of like exploration, it gets a little repetitive. But it's cool because every planet has like a completely different environment. So every time you show up, it's like everything's procedurally generated, and you never know like what you're gonna find. Yeah. Oh, I will say it's the one thing I haven't touched yet is uh, much of the multiplayer beyond what the game. Uh, oh, Spencer and I have of- so much with it <laughs> you know you do go to the uh the anomaly d- just during the base game so you get like uh, kind of a funny uh um not really a story but like a little anecdote is just the fact that i went in and uh you go into this hub world where all the other live players show up and uh i went idle for a minute when i came back somebody had given me some items and i was like oh cool i didn't even know you could do that so then i looked at what they gave me they gave me items that were worth like uh, something ridiculous like 25 million dollars in credits in the game Jeez. and i was like oh my god at that time i had like less than a million dollars <laughs> million oh, credits so, this- <laughs> <better than me. laughs> so so uh so yeah it's so there's some I, i'm curious to see how the multiplayer goes uh, that'd be something great for us all to get into at some point yeah spencer and i have actually yeah, built sure, a sure. base called uh dingus colony it's a fully built base uh i added a second floor to part of the building now we have two landing pads and we might if you're gonna play with us we i might go ahead and build a third landing pad for you well we will check all that yeah, out so. when we play yes. but let's move on shall we to the next pick of the week Woo! the uh that would be mine and that would be Baldur's gate 3 a game that just recently yeah. hit 
Uh, it was in early access for a couple of years. Uh, and uh, it finally got a full release and uh, a bunch of us got it. And we played for 14 hours on Sunday. It is wow. literally <laughs> graphical D&D. Like, go watch on Council 6 Twitch video. I, I don't know if the YouTube video saved because we played for so long that <laughs> he might have lost the, the, the VOD. Um, but, uh, yeah, go. it's an amazing game. They really put a lot of work into it. There's some bugs, obviously, as any game that comes out. We were just talking about that. Uh, but also, uh, there's some really intuitive uh, mechanics. Sure. Uh, the only thing I would say, don't use a controller, John. Too many uh, hotkeys and <laughs> stuff that you need? Too many. Yeah, every time, pretty much every time John was trying to figure out how to do something, it was because the controller limited him in how it approached it. Like it would change the whole UI when you, you when you plugged a controller in. Yeah, <laughs> and he still. But the only advantage to it was the movement using the left stick to move around rather than the point He's, click. He, he, he he says controller is great. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I'm, I'm of the same. Uh, I'm of the same kind of mindset where I try to use a controller nowadays. Even though I'm a veteran PC player, but. Still, it's like it's kind of easier in a lot of ways to use the controller, but the downside not for this game in yeah, in one of those situations where you need you need to use all those extra hotkeys and things like that, right? So it kind of limits you in a sense. It's not even that. It was that it would change the UI on on how to like easily do things. Like bartering, for example. You had to figure out what the buttons were while with keyboard and mouse, it was a button you just clicked with the mouse. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and, and that's the like the, the character creation. We we do wish there were more races, but there is a mod that I found that looks like it was created during early access. That looks like it's being updated for full release. That includes like forty seven uh, races. That's great. So I'm very yeah, excited I, I think for really, that. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, I, it's just really important to highlight that. It, like it really literally feels like D and D encapsulated in a game. And uh, it it felt great to just sit there for like twelve hours straight and just play it, and it yeah. did not feel that long. No, so <laughs> no, it, yeah. it it was, and we haven't even scratched the surface in those fourteen hours of lot. this game. There is so much. I have a feeling there's this is not the only map. Like there's got to mm. you know, and that's the thing because because there's. This game seems to really tie into the different planes of existence in uh, in D and D lore, so it, it's very it's going to be very interesting to see what happens as we continue to play. Now, the only little bit of a downside we'll is time will tell is not being able to like jump into any campaign with any character. So, for example, if you want to join, like come play with us, you would have to start a level one character. Right, uh, while I'll say we're higher levels, but then you get easily power leveled. So, definitely uh, something a game to check out. It's full sixty dollars right now. It will go on sale. Get it on Steam. It's coming to console. It's on GOG as well. But definitely recommend picking it up if you have a PC on PC for sure. Absolutely, definitely a PC game. Yeah. Now, uh, just a question about that. So, if if you're uh, it's, if you, you essentially each character is tied to that campaign, is that is that correct? How it works? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to create a different character for every campaign, which I think is great, especially yep. once we get the mod in that's going to have all those different races. So that'll be cool. Be able to try all those. Um. So moving on, sure. Spencer. Uh, speaking moving of on. like medievalish, like old timey. Like <laughs> and and D and D style right. creatures. Tell right, us about your right, pick of the week. Right. Well, I'm I'm the weirdo with a group who didn't choose a game. I actually watched a movie that recently came out. I watched it last Thursday. Uh, that I feel like is being very underappreciated, or just not enough people are checking it out because it's not doing well at all. It's doing terribly at the box office. <laughs> but that is a movie called The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Which tells a story, actually a story from a single chapter of the original Dracula novel, 
about uh, the crew of the Demeter that sets sail. And uh, you see, like, essentially Dracula's rise to power as he essentially starts as, like, a zombie. And he turns... By the end of the movie, he does it kind of turn into more of, like, the Dracula that you think of more. And so, uh... I, I really appreciate... I, I really enjoyed the movie overall. John says it's okay. I, I'll say this. I don't think it was, like, an absolutely, like, great horror movie. Like, I'm not a big horror fan in general. But this is, uh... I'm not looking forward to much horror movies ever. So, like, th this is the first horror movie I think I've ever legitimately gone to a theater and be like, oh, yes, I want to see this. And so, and yeah, you, you, John's right. The, the movie was not scary at all. It, it's not. But it was, I, I felt like the story it told of Dracula's rise to power on the boat, I really enjoyed seeing that tale. And I enjoyed connecting with, uh, the crew of the ship, and I enjoyed, <clears throat> uh, just, it, it just felt, it was a nice, slower-paced movie that helped you just connect with the characters in general, and I enjoyed it. And, uh, it's really unfortunate that I feel like it's just not doing well, because by the end, it does leave it largely open-ended to continue to the next. But yeah, overall, I definitely recommend uh, checking out this gym because I uh, love me some Dracula and it, it's a good new unique, well, not new take on Dracula, but it, it, it's kind of like, think Alien but like with Dracula on a ship, kind of and yeah, so, it's that. nice seeing yeah, the classic chapter it, yeah, it's nice yeah. seeing the classic chapter be adapted into a full-on movie that I think works overall cool yeah, it's uh, definitely yeah. one I'll uh, check okay, out. I think two-hour movie. Yep. Sure. Yep. 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 Anyway, I guess we'll go ahead and start well, no, talking about our to first say. topic. You had something to say. Oh, you did? Sorry, my bad. No, I was just going to say that's something I'll check out. I might, uh, I might, I might wait till streaming as well for that. But I know that's one that for sure me and the misses will want to watch together. Nice. So nice. I think, uh, nice, nice. and yeah, I've heard the, some of the. Uh, a few people mentioned the similarities to like a, you know, kind of like an alien type of movie uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that they're stuck on a specific location and uh, with the one creature that's trying to get them in this case, that creature being Dracula yeah. mm -hmm. and you know, it's Dracula on a boat as opposed to an alien in space. So mm -hmm. I could see right. those similarities there. Yep. Well, all good all right. picks. Uh, definitely check them Absolutely. out. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but on to our next topic, as John so excitedly put in the chat, Ahsoka! Hey! Ahsoka! So, Woo! Um, now, before <laughs> we do talk about this topic, I want to preface it by saying, folks, there may be a, a little bit of an ad break in the middle of this topic. We were trying to get fully done through it. Uh, so just be prepared for an ad break uh, if uh, in it. Yes. Anyway. Uh, All right. Are we wrapping up? How long is the ad break for now? It'll we'll be a, we'll... Yeah, we'll just come on. Get on with okay. the topic. We're going to go ahead. We're good now. Get on with the topic. Directors. All right. We're going to jump into it. Directors I just want to make sure everybody was now. coming out of ad break first. All right. We're going to be talking about Ahsoka Directors. It was officially announced via Lucasfilm through a press release. We have the list of the official directors of all eight episodes of the show. Of course, kicking it off with episode one, we have the immortal Davis Filoni. Dave Filoni. <laughs> <laughs> His name's not Davis. Simp. <laughs> Simp. Uh, and then, of course, Simp. we got... We got Steph Green coming back. Uh, I heard she did some good episodes of Book of Boba Fett, like the episodes people really liked. So okay. she's coming back to direct episodes two and three. Uh, we got Peter Peter Ramsey for episode four. I don't know. I don't know what he's if he's done anything yet. I forget. I know he hasn't done anything with no, Mandalorian. No. Did he do Mandalorian? Peter Ramsey is tied to uh, Spider Verse. So oh, no, not with Star Wars. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, that's a big get, then, for Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dave Filoni will be back for Episode 5, so whatever's happening, Episode 5 is going to be big. Uh, then we got Jennifer Getzinger. I don't... Do you know anything about her? What's she from? Why does the name look from? so familiar? It looks very Jen familiar. Jen Getzinger. I, Let's look at her, her up real quick while you continue the net. Yeah. 
All right, so she's yeah. done. Let's see here. Go on. Uh, Prophecy, on. Phantoms, well, yeah. Clay Pigeons, right, hey, Devil Wears no, Go on to the next one while I pull her up. All right. Okay. <laughs> so we got Gita Patel for episode seven. I don't know who Gita Patel is. And then, of course, Rick Famuyiwa is coming back from Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. He's been in since Mandalorian season one. He seems to be... Uh, not the most well loved of the listed directors of Star Wars content, mm-hmm. but he, especially these last few seasons of content he's done, he's really produced much much better content. Uh, so if Dave put him on the finale episode, Dave's got s- some serious ideas of what he wants yeah. for the direction to go, and that's why he would have picked Rick yeah. to do that final episode. Mm-hmm. So I'm really it's, excited it's great... to see what he does for the finale because for Dave to to trust him, not for Dave to direct the finale to say rick i want you to do something big's happening in that finale mm-hmm. that's going to be a phenomenal finale one thing yeah, that, uh, i just want to mention real quick uh uh gita patel uh she huh? did some work on house of the dragon yeah she did an okay. episode of house uh, of the yeah. dragon episode of the magicians runaways dead to me nice. santa clarita diet superstore she that's did five episodes of uh the mini project 3 uh, fresh off the boat. One, yeah, she's done a lot. A lot of sitcoms. A lot of uh, no, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Okay, a little bit of each. A little, a little action. Bit, a little yeah, bit of little sitcom. Action, a little comedy. Little, yeah. So the thing that then, excites cool. me the most would be in that uh, the House of the Dragon, as that was just an excellent first season of that show. So yeah. If, oh, if yeah. you bring bring any of that uh, directorial talent over, that would be, that would be great to see how that translates. Do you remember what episode she did? Like, how was it received? Um, it was that? the Lord of the Tides. Was the name of the episode, the eighth episode. Um, I still haven't seen that. So one. was that the last one? I think so. Yeah, I think it was a it was a ten episode longer. season. So. Oh. Oh. Okay. 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 Yeah. The, the the new one coming up is only going to be eight. Oh, that's right. That's right. So we, we <laughs> John's definitely want to second what... half of of House of the Dragon. Eh. So Peter Ramsey, I, I, it does get weird. Jennifer Getzinger, she did an episode, of, three episodes uh, of Jessica Jones, two episodes of Westworld, okay. two episodes of okay, Dead so to Me, two episodes of The Nevers, into, Outer Range. Uh, she's action sci-fi then, yeah. so I, I feel pretty safe with her on that. So Gita Patel is really going to be one to watch, and then I guess Peter Ramsey coming out of Spider Verse, see what he does. Um, now, Spencer, I know you're a big Spider Verse fan. Do you think he's going to bring some of that Spider Verse like action, like and and you know tight dialogue uh, to Ahsoka? Um, maybe not necessarily that. But the the biggest connection I see, uh, if you were to put Spider Verse and Ahsoka together, right? The connection I see uh-huh. is maybe that could do something with the world between worlds. Oh, I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah, that would make sense. They'd be like, uh, hey, the guy that did the multiverse thing with the spider guy, yeah, let's bring him in to do World Between Worlds. That's a good point, <laughs> yeah. Um, are we, we going to see That's the only connection it? I see there. It'll be like that scene from Last Jedi with Ray, like the never-ending hallway of Rays, <laughs> except it's different oh, variants of Ahsoka. <laughs> oh, God. It I'll could get really trippy. It, it might get a little trippy, guys. I will that, pass on I will that definitely one. definitely pass on that, too. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, just like gonna, the... They're all going to the... snap, because her, her nickname is Snips. Oh, they're going to change oh, to no. Snaps. Oh, God. Gosh. All right, all right. We're just going anyway. to stop you here. <laughs> yeah. Stop you here. This is such a great list of directors. <laughs> that I can't wait for the show. Um, I mean, none of these names worries me at all. Uh, this no, is literally a, a Filoni... It's a Filoni child is what this show is right like he's pretty much he wrote every episode i think there's this there's one or two baby. that you may have co-written with somebody but every episode has his name attached this is his baby ahsoka's always been his baby so it's very exciting to see uh all of these directors and the fact that's only a week away and i know all of us here at red shirts can't wait to talk about it a week from today this is our final episode before episodes one or two air so next week, yeah, yeah. we can officially mm-hmm. start talking about it if you guys wish to do so. We might well, wait a few days. I'm not sure. Here's the thing, we'll though. Well, later. we'll, we'll be talking about that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about what's going on next week. But, folks, later uh, on. yeah. Uh, Ahsoka comes out next Wednesday. Oh, and not one. listed. John Favreau is executive producing the show. 
Well, that's not surprising. Well, of course. Duh. So, yeah, man. I figured I'd make so. sure that was mentioned because <laughs> right. he showed up. He showed up in a recent video for the uh, show. Hold, hold that yeah, thought, actually, because we're going to have to Filoni. stop here for, uh, so, for a quick yeah. ad break. We're going to take a quick break, break here. It's time quick for a commercial here. as Ooh. we take a quick break with a word from the Twitch sponsors. We'll be back, folks. <clears throat> the stream is sponsored by Red Shirts. Red Shirts worn by only Chris. <laughs> I do have a red hat on still, though. That's that's okay. <laughs> All right, what are we going to talk man. about next? 93 Ooh. seconds. So we can go. Ad break ends in three minutes. There it goes. All right. Break is going. After this, we'll be getting right into all the THQ uh, stuff. Yeah, we definitely went long on our picks of the week. Yes. We also started a little late, so that's okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. We're talking about the timeline. The Time. timeline, because we oh. have to have oh, yeah, a specific yeah, yeah. timeline yeah. for ads now. Like, I'm going to have to tell you about that when you stream right from your Xbox. After 30 minutes, there's going to be a three-minute ad. Well, we might change it for the gaming. We're yeah, yeah, that's though, true. Good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because we only did that because it fit, best fit the show for tonight. We haven't talked about the gaming yet, which right, right, right. Probably well, when you're here, Patrick, it'll probably be worth trying to quickly talk about that before we all go to bed. Because I know I'll be hopping off shortly after because I need to get a good amount of sleep. Skill. Skill. <clears throat> Are the ads running? What do we got running for us right now? Blue Beetle know. ad John said he got. Nice, nice. Nice. I never thought I would see the day you would get ads, said Matthew Covert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ye of little be faith. Honest. That's funny. Well, I'm going to be honest. With Kev, we probably never were. Damn. Dude, without Kev, we got it in months. And we already had like 20 some followers, but like those were just people who had jumped over from YouTube. You no? Know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. In months. So. Yeah, that's true, because that's a lot um, of the people that. Uh, a lot of us have helped bring people over, yeah. you know? I'm good. good All right. I don't have to say my timer, but it should be coming back really 50, soon, I think. 50 seconds. 55, 55 seconds. Okay. 55? Okay, thank you. I, see, I, I, I get it. I see when it... Uh, well, I, I can math and I know when it comes back now. Yeah, it uh, just... it shows up in the Twitch chat for us. Because of mod view. Yeah, yes. Your mods. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, I just had to reload it to because I was... Uh, testing something and that went away when I reloaded. That's oh, uh, Matthew's like, I didn't get a blue beetle ad. <laughs> ad. Matthew, what ad he got? When we Twitch come... is selective. Here, I'll go ahead and ask him now. All right, 15 seconds, yeah? 10. All right, be ready to talk about THQ. Yeah, baby. Yeah, let me get that one page up. That's got all of them. And we're back. And we are back. back. Woo woo. We are Thanks back so much, to everybody. talk about our main topic. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for holding out for all appreciate that. Appreciate y'all. Uh, and uh, yeah, we exactly. definitely appreciate the all. patience. <laughs> patience. Hope you grabbed a snack. Relieved yourselves, whatever you need to do. And we're here to talk about our main topic. Anybody gonna elaborate? Cool. Great yeah, conversation. So, we're talk about... <laughs> Matthew says Matthew says I got Melissa McCarthy another ad. Oh my god. <laughs> no oh boo beetle god. for you. <laughs> so folks, uh, last week, EHQ Nordic had a, a showcase. I believe it was Thursday. They did. And uh, they announced a bunch of really, 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 really in here. I'll pull up. 
pull them up. Really, this has probably been their better one in recent years. Really cool games. Oh, wrong. What? Yeah, there's yeah. definitely some highlights here for sure. There were a few I think they'd previously announced, but we actually finally got to really see them, like you know, fleshed out. So that was really cool because mm -hmm. I I saw several they debuted in here that I was like, yeah, we'd heard of these before, but we definitely get to see some you know like yeah. finally seeing some game footage, which was kind of cool for sure. So, what stood out? Just looking at this this list of games, we got Alone in the Dark, uh -huh. Gothic remake, yep. the Ninja Turtles game, the Last Train Home mm -hmm. game, which we'll Patrick and I will geek out over. Um, oh yes, yes Outcast, yes, yes. a new beginning. Uh, that one too. New South Park game, Snow Day. We're very excited for that. <laughs> yeah. Space for Sale, which looks really cool. Tempest Rising. Which one was that? That was the one that's like the military know. RTS. Oh it's yeah, like, yeah. Like GDF. Like oh yeah, GDF yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. GDF and all that. Yeah. Titan Quest Two. Very excited for that. We're gonna get a, probably into some Titan Quest One later in a couple of months, probably. Um, maybe even like a month, mm -hmm. depending on all when we finish another game we've been playing on the. Who, Who knows? But we will be streaming Titan Quest One anyway. Um, Trine Five, which looks really cool. Um, Way of the Hunter. <laughs> Which we have some funny things to talk about with that because we made some funny comments about it. And Recreation, which looks like a lot of fun. So, uh, first of all, we all watched it, <laughs> right? Yep. Um, everybody's standout game. Even if you didn't see gameplay or game you're most excited for, Or give us Ooh. game you're most excited for, game you were most surprised by, like like whatever you want to give me. All right, um, I'll go ahead and start. So Outcast is the one that really stood out for me, okay. as as one that like it starts off kind of like cool looking, and then when they really dive into how deep it is and how uh, and how things interconnect, like the world is going to be interconnected, like the species. The, the you as the player, the actual NPCs in the game, uh, character relationships between other NPCs, like that whole system is really deep. Um, and then you're gonna have it's almost like how you're playing as like almost like a visitor. I don't even know if you're a visitor. It seems like from what I saw in the trailer, it seems like you're a visitor on the planet. Like you're not a local. Like you're exploring this world for the very first time, and kind of like you know meeting everybody and getting you know used to the the planetary culture and all that. So that was really, really cool. Um, and then you have like this invading force. So it very felt like it felt like very avatar esque, how like you have this like military force coming into like a very natural world. So that was really cool. But the inner, the interconnectedness remind me a lot of like JRPGs, how you have like different character relationships and, and how that leveling system works and how, how things are inter interplay together. And if you like, generate like a really good relationship you can get boosts and extra things like characters might do with certain things animals might get certain stat boosts based off those relationships so that game goes way deeper than the surface level and i can't tell if it i need to go back and look that game might have been developed in ue5 because it looks very beautiful and it's uh, got like I don't giant think it was. cliffs and it wasn't okay. I don't I have to go so, back and look no. at that because there was like big cliffs and it was highly detailed. So oh, yeah. I it, wasn't get that with, that. it looks pretty good. You can get that with ray tracing and DLSS. Uh, so, to yeah. I'll have to go back and see what in, what engine they used for that game because sure. that was very intriguing to me. For sure. So, yeah, that was my standout. All right. Mm, who wants to go next? Uh, I think yeah, you could go on Geo. Yeah, for the two for me that well, there was there was two that that I was excited for. One that well, I'll just go into it. So uh, I think South Park is, is uh, looks like it could be very interesting. We didn't get to see much, but it if uh, based on the last two uh, South Park games, they've both been very well done, and I think it's very clear that the creators of South Park, Matt and Trey, are both uh, game fans, and they're invested in making good games based on their properties or having good games made about their properties. So I think that this is something that if, if it holds up based on the success of those two, uh, it, that could be something very fun. And it kind of gives those vibes of 
something like uh, what we saw in South Park back on uh, the 64. I can't remember. Was the game just called South Park? Um, but they, South they, Park they, 64? And it might have been just South Park. Yeah, I think it was just called South Park, look. yeah. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit, in a, in a sense, just the vibes of the game. and uh, it's So I think we will have to see more, but that definitely... Um, was one of the first standouts as, as well. They uh, they did mention the uh, TMNT, the last Ronin um, game. They didn't really show any footage, but just mentioned that they're yeah. developing that. Um, and one, I, I'll just, I'm sure you guys have some thoughts on those, but one other one as well was uh, they did mention a new Alone in the Dark game, which I, I can't say that I'm excited for, but it's something that I would like to be good. Just because I have, uh, I, I I remember the first Alone in the Dark back in the day, and that was like the precursor to the survival horror genre in a sense, yeah. where you, you know games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill and stuff all took cues from that first Alone in the Dark game. So I'd really that love was a game to Boy see game, right? Alone in the Dark. No, it was a uh, PC. It was a PC game. See, okay. DOS, so I, I believe. That, yes, there's, but, there's uh, a, uh, a GB port or GB version. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was. There's, there's oh, been sure. a lot of. There's been many Alone in the Dark yeah, games over the yeah. years, but I, it's one that's never really come back to prominence, and that's something I would really love to see done right. Um, so I, I don't. I don't know if I have the faith that it will be, but that's. I'll be keeping my eye on it at least. I'll say that. Sure. Um, you can download the demo now. Of the prologue, down the prologue actually. So it's like a, not even a demo. It's a prequel to the story, so it doesn't spoil anything. Oh, Stars awesome. David Harbor, uh, from obviously Stranger Things fame, as well as Jodie Comer, who is from uh, Killing Eve, as well as Free Guy. Uh, so uh, she is a, a nice. good action actress. So that'll be interesting to see them. And of course, we know David Harbor also was in uh, the new Hellboy, as well as. Black Widow, so he obviously has the acting chops for for action, this kind of role as well, so I'm very excited. Alone in the Dark, yeah, Geo is a game that that's one of mine uh, for sure that I was surprised by and very excited about. I've forgotten about it because I had actually remembered seeing the the seeing something about it and downloading the, the prologue, and I never played it, and this was great to see it with David Harbour and everything, and then seeing Jodie Comer's name as well. Very excited Yeah, that's for that. great. So, uh, Spencer, what about yourself? What, uh... Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, there is several titles that stand out to me, honestly. <laughs> um, one of the big ones, but Patrick already went in depth into it, was Outcast. But that I've been interested in that one so much so that I've downloaded the first one on PlayStation because it's part of their version of Game Pass. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there, there's other ones, too, that uh, stand out to me. Um, I think the one that really opened me up to something that I wasn't really expecting was uh, Titan Quest 2, to where, even though it was just a cinematic, it's a very interesting world, with since it's all around uh, Greek, mytho Greek mythology, mm -hmm. uh, which is something I've always been interested in. Like, I grew up reading the uh, Percy Jackson books, and but anyway, beside the point, uh, it interested me to see, like, oh, what kind of game is this? To where I looked up the first game on Steam, and I'm like, oh this looks like a game that's right up my alley. And then I also, <laughs> when looking at it, I was like, oh, apparently I own this game that I got sometime too as part of a big charity bundle. And so I'm really excited to get into playing the first Titan Quest sometime. Uh, it, yeah, just since it, it does look like something that's like right up my alley, kind of Diablo-esque, I suppose. Yeah. Um, something else that really stood out to me was something called Space for Sale. That game is like a 2D version of, uh, what's the best way games to put it? It kind of gave me feels of like, um, what's that game? Astroneer yep. and, uh, uh I'm not uh, sure. Exactly. Light Your Frontier, which is coming uh, out. Light Your Frontier. Could, could, yeah. Yep. Um, a little bit of Pikmin in there as well, too. And maybe even yeah. a little bit of Kerbal yeah. Space Program and like knows? astronaut design. There, it looks like a, ni a lot of nice little things, right? Like it, it yeah. appears as if there's multiplayer with all the different people and, yep. uh, you know, people that are around a great variety of alien life in it. And you build up your bases and have to power everything, the automation, you know, kind of reminding me a little bit of Satisfactory in a way, too. So yeah, just a little. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, just a little. And so uh, I'm very looking forward to see what comes out from that game for sure. 
Um, uh, and but, you can uh, uh, you can apply for the closed beta now already. Oh yes, as you well. can. Yep. Wow. Yes, you can. So that's yes, yeah. yes, we can. So um, the URL on there, the screen for sure. Uh, there, there's one other game that really well, other than the big one, there's one other game that stood out to me called Recreation, <laughs> and it looks like you you know that Hot Wheels game that uh. We, you know, what was that called? Hot Wheels Unleashed, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Hot that Wheels, one where we race each other all the time on game. Yeah. Right, yeah. that Hot Wheels game. It looks hey, Gio, like that. You own that. Gio, you own <laughs> that. <laughs> it's 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 a bit like that game, but with like more realistic cars, but on steroids. And so it looks a lot of fun. You can build tracks. You can actually build tracks with each other. It looks like people can test the tracks as somebody else is building it. It looks and like a live. lot of fun. As they build it, it will yeah. appear live for the people testing right. it. Yeah. So that's going to be really can... cool. So, yeah, it looks like an awesome new version of that game. So I'm really looking forward to that for sure. Fantastic. I think for me, the... Uh... The two main ones that stood out were uh, probably Outcast. Definitely, I agree. Recreation for sure. Probably the two that stood out that showed us gameplay. Um, South Park. Honestly, I'm gonna say I was a little disappointed in how the gameplay looked. Um, but again, very early in development, I'm sure. Yeah, so I'm not gonna year, judge please. fully until we see the final product. It looked very last gen um to me uh but again they could be also making it that way to make it accessible for everybody i'm down with that too uh surprise biggest surprise for me was alone in the dark uh, uh seeing david harbour there i had no idea he was in it um and then jody comer's name uh recreation though i think is the one we would play the most uh because of just the replay value of it um, I am very excited for Titan Quest 2. Um, but I think uh, one that I would like to talk about that is a very unique game that that I've never seen this take on a game, and that's The Last Train Home. It, it is so... Um, uh, it's, it's so brand new. It, it's so interesting how it takes like Risk-style elements, RTS-style elements, base-building elements, but mobile base-building like you're building a train base and you're also yeah. like exploring i think it's the eastern front of uh world war two i want to say oh, one i think one is it one is it one yeah okay yeah, yeah you're yeah, right you're right yeah world war one um and uh you have to send troops out and the gameplay then is when you send the troops out is like yeah. you're playing what was that Sorry, that was my bad. Okay. Well, sure. it, it, it wasn't my fault. It was a motorcycle. But. Okay. Oh, okay. I was just making sure. It's like, what the hell? It's haunted. The stream oh, is Gio haunted. Was rev um, Gio was revving up the Harley and getting out of here. <laughs> but You uh, dang kids <laughs> and your motorcycles. So you have your bases, and much like in XCOM, you have your squads, and you recruit people, and they it looks like they're gonna there is gonna be permadeath, which I love that mechanic in games like this, where you actually get attached to the to the the soldier that you're sending out there and you're like, No, Georgie died. It's no. gonna hurt when you're especially if it's a character you really like get attached to. Yeah. Um, That's gonna suck when they die. You're gonna be like, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely got some some unique elements I haven't seen in many games. There's a whole job system. Like every single person and every soldier, you can give them jobs on the train, in the battlefield. And then the game's gonna throw you curveballs like, you know, de train derailments and Oh, I'm like, sure. Well, and getting bombarded <laughs> by the <laughs> Russians, yeah, by the Cossacks and stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. you're going in there and you're apparent apparently you're the it looks like you're like the scout ahead kind of group that's going in and, and, and mapping everything. And that's what the way it sounded like in the, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I wonder if there's going to be a multiplayer aspect to it. I will be intrigued to see that. I always love these kind of games um, because of the, how much strategy is required uh, to, uh, to play them. Uh, you can get lost in these kind of games for hours. 
for hours. I don't know if anybody else wants to to uh, Spencer, you and Diablo. Same same kind of yeah. concept, yeah. you know. Uh where you just get so lost in what you're doing um because there's it's just so in depth, so many mechanics. No man's sky is the same way, Geo. I'm sure you've Yep. Baldur's Gate three. So that that <laughs> when they include all these kind of like interesting new quote complicated mechanics into games, you know that there's a lot of heart put into the game and that it's gonna be worth playing. Uh all right. Yeah, yeah this is one of those games where I, I think like a lot of other strategy games, it's going to be one of those games you're really going to get lost in. Time is going to fly by. Like you said, Baldur's Gate situation straight out of the gate. You know, this is one of those games you could easily pour 12 hours in on day one. You're mm. like, wait a minute, the sun's down? What? <laughs> it's like, holy cow. We're like, like the sun's the... up? What? Or the, Yeah, the sun's <laughs> up. <laughs> it's time for, the you know, next day of work. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. basically yeah <laughs> so so the, it's it's gonna be one of those games it, it's it looks very much like like you were saying with that permadeath system it's really gonna it's gonna make you feel like it's really attaching you to the game it, it's not just like oh they'll come back later or somebody else will replace it no that game is gonna have a lot of attachment value and I think it, it's going to be a, a long stay for a lot of replayability. It, it's not going to be like the usual replayability you normally see. It's going to be one of those games like if you fully game over or whatever, you're going to be more enticed to start over again. You're going to be willing to want to go back and do it, you know, something better next time. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree because there's going to be way more, more than one uh, way to play. Uh, one game... I want to talk about that I don't think is going to do very well because I think it's just too late is the Gothic remake. While it's cool that they're doing it, I think it's, you know, Skyrim's out. You know, we have games like this. It's, yeah. it's, it's another game just like that. It was one of the original games like that, but I think doing a remake of it is just like, it's a money grab for sure. Um, I think, I think it's a little too little too late. Not not too little. It's just going to be another one of those games no one cares about. Yeah, like not. Yeah. It's just cuz people have better things to play now because those unless yeah. they do something like brand new and they're like, "Oh yeah, we did the remake and added this brand new mechanic that no one's ever done before." Sure, but right now I feel that it's there's it's an oversaturation of that genre on the market for sure. Especially these days. And can we talk about Way of the Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> the DLC. DLC. The, guys, go, uh, the Afri- guys, African DLC. animals. I have to bless the rains down in Africa. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> look, look. This is the kind of game. Some time. I'm going to take some time to oh, do the no. things I've never had. Oh jeez, here we go. Ooh, woo. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna start me. You know, oh, I feel it coming on. I bless the rains down in Africa. Um, uh, I, this game, I feel like there's gonna be controversy around, and like these like I- irrational yeah. protesters are gonna protest it and be like, ah, "You're killing African lions. They're they're endangered. It's a virtual lion." It's still murder. Virtual murder is murder. We're breeding yes. the oh, yeah. poachers. Is that where you stab the, the, an AI? <laughs> no, the the controversy is really going to come in with the DLC with the uh, the the um, assassination of Harambe. Oh no! Oh, oh, my, god. oh my gosh! <laughs> oh wow! Oh, yes. And not too wow. soon, folks. Not too soon. Whip them out! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, my, my no, boy, my, for that one. In, it, in it, all seriousness, it, 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 <laughs> Geo, Geo, is the tenth anniversary of that coming up? Is that? Oh, is I, that I have no idea. Whoa. It was it just the, that long ago. Let's see what what day was that? Hmm. 
I think the oh, yeah, uh, anyway, was go on. 2016. 2016. No, on, it, okay. In all seriousness, though, like I think he, Chris is right in the sense that yeah, there probably will be some people that have an issue with it, but I think we kind of have to come to a point in society where it's like, yes, this is the internet era. The, we have billions of people that have eyes on everything now, so mm -hmm. the, uh, nothing's going to please everyone. Everything is going to make someone mad. So I think what you have to do is, as a developer mm -hmm. and as the publisher, is kind of just understand that and don't bend your will to a vocal minority right if there's something that you're as long as you're not doing something short-sighted and you know if it's if it really is uh innocent as you know most games are you can have the confidence going in that it's like you don't really need to um you, you don't really need to worry about it like you just keep doing what you're doing the, the it'll blow over and you're you know it, it is what it is I think that's something that we we need to uh, focus on more. It's just yeah, like let people are going to be mad, and that's okay. It's like they're allowed to be mad, and you're allowed to just keep doing your what you're doing as long as it's not hurting someone else, right? So Mufasa steaks for dinner, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's what is it, what did they think is gonna? Are we going back to the '90s mentality of like, oh, people are going to see this, and then they're going to going to want to go hunt animals in Africa or the something? Whole, like, the whole like <laughs> early '90s like. Violent video games cause real world violence. Well, that's that's what I'm getting at, right? Because that was yeah, their whole yeah. argument around, yeah. around games like Mortal Kombat board, and Doom. Board, was that yeah. they were like, "Oh, well, the people are going to see this and emulate it," and it's like that's just not how games work. If anything, you could make the argument yeah. that they prevent people from doing violent violent crimes because they have people an outlet. Respect it more too, like they respect yes. like the, the sport of hunting and and respect like. You know, if you were to go hunting, it, it's not, I'm just going to go kill this animal. You respect that that animal is giving its life up for either meat or whatever purpose, you know. Well, another and that's, thing, too. That's is, 90% of hunters, I would say, in the world are, are like that. So Yeah, well, you don't even have to even get that deep into it. It's also yeah. just a thing where, like, think about how many people, like, have you killed an animal in the game? I'm sure everyone here and everyone yes. listening would yeah. say yes yeah. to that. And the thing is, is, like, would you kill one in real life? I'm sure 100% of us would also, say, like, say no in the sense of, like, if, it was, if, we, if we just saw an animal walking down the street like a cat. No. You wouldn't just run up and attack the cat for no reason, even though you might have done it in the game, right? Because what happens in the game is different. <laughs> it's not well, real life. A psychopath. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And as I'm sure that's like what one percent of the population they're just going to do that regardless of whether there's I don't a video know, in game. Twenty twenty three. It might be closer to twenty percent. But the point yeah. being is, like, the video game isn't going to be the thing that tips them over the edge, where they're like, "Oh, you know what? I never, I was never going to do it before, but now that this video game did it." I think he was like, I did it before, but it's time to reunite Harambe Jr. with his dad. <laughs> Damn. Finish business. <laughs> See, now I got to buy all this equipment and go hunt in Africa now. <laughs> I, I can see spencer is gonna be like one year from now he's gonna be like on the african savannah we're like spencer what are you doing out there he's been hunting <laughs> don't, don't worry we'll uh bless the rains down there for you <laughs> oh man oh, okay my. oh boy I, oh boy I have nothing else to say there and all of oh these like call boy. of the hunter and way of the hunter games are generally have really funny moments in them anyways yeah, Matthew <laughs> yeah. makes a good point here as well. I'll just highlight that. Uh, he says, uh, never felt the need to steal a car after playing Grand Theft Auto. That's right? yes, exactly. Yeah. And then, and, really? and, Call and you know, that's not too. even, yeah, that's not even the argument of like who's playing them because that's a whole different argument about like, oh, whether yeah. kids shouldn't or not. But that's something else entirely. But just saying that you're an adult playing a game, you're, you're not, yeah. Sam, <laughs> I'd like to. I don't think anybody has gotten the idea to steal a car from Grand Theft Auto, no. just as an example. Well, yeah. maybe. No. Like, oh, I never considered that before. Like, <laughs> that's a, That was a possibility? What? Yeah, we could do that? <laughs> I just want to shout out Castro's in the chat now. Yeah, shout out to Castro. Since his congratulations. Thank you, good us. sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciate seeing you come by. We we're just talking about some of the games that was shown off at the THQ Nordic uh, presentation that happened. Lots of stuff. We we're just talking about, uh, yeah, hunting. <laughs> Way of the hunter. <laughs> Way of the hunter, right? 
I don't know a, uh, a, a joke for this. Red shirt something. <laughs> After red the stream is over. Red shirt stained. Oh, red shirt stained. Red shirt's reloaded. Red stained shirt. <laughs> oh, God. Red shirt's reloaded. Oh. Oh, Isn't that, no. Is that one of the ones we came up with? No, right? No. I, don't, I don't think so, but I don't think so because I don't think that's what either we, way. There's a reason we didn't go yeah, with that. <laughs> apparently. Uh, so wow. the next, the next game I say we talk about is uh, just quickly to touch on Tempest Rising. I guess. Um, yeah. This is the one I, I mean, walked away. RTS. Yeah, just another <laughs> RTS. Let me find it. I mean, it looks solid. It though. gave me yeah. like. Command and Conquer, yeah. Command and Conquer, Command and Conquer sort of vibes. Definitely, and then like, maybe a little XCOM mix in there with it, too. So when I heard the opening cutscene and it was like GDF, I th thought of Command and Conquer instantly because they have GDI, I think, as their forces. Mm. So I'm like, oh, they are yeah. Command and Conquer fans. So, yeah, this is just like yeah. looks like a simple RTS sci-fi Tempest Rising mm -hmm. Yeah. It did, did look kind of cool though, like the 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 design, like the actual art design of like the vehicles, and I don't know. There's there's some very unique about the design of like, especially the vehicles. I noticed that's a little bit different than your usual military RTS. Yeah, well, that's what reminded me of the Command and Conquer too. Is they had this yeah. semi futuristic, very but unique, not fully futuristic, like yeah. steampunkish, but not more like sci-fi. Not really. Not steampunk, not but like. But like the Not essence, Warhammer 40K well, the armor essence of steampunk, stuff. where it's it's the yeah. the essence of steampunk is yeah. two eras kind of mesh to mash together, yeah, mash together, um, to create its own kind of thing. Uh, so that's what it kind of I, always feels like. I got the vibe of like the the Battlefield 2042, but the technology is just a little say, more advanced. A little mm. more advanced, like almost like 2060. That's 2070s. a good way, a good one to do. For me, it definitely reminded me of like the newer Command and Conquer games, which not I, I say new, but newer, but it's probably been like 15 years. Uh, I don't know when would the, the last one was. Not counting the remakes, of course, or remasters. But uh, um, I think it's definitely nice to see uh more rts games coming out i think there's a few they, they announced at uh um summer games fest if i'm not mistaken um yeah but a few, I believe. so basically we're see, yeah we're seeing a hopefully see a little bit of a resurgence in the genre because they kind of got taken over by mobas and uh things like that and so fps's yeah and for whatever reason you know um we just weren't seeing them as much so they were one of my, I would say one of my favorite genres. So I would be very happy to see some good ones come back. As long as they put in the care, that is uh, definitely something that'll bring people back in. Yeah, you got to do it right. Don't just throw it, yeah. throw one out for the sake of doing one, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, and and hopefully it's not like you know full of like a million microtransactions. But well, those hey, if that's how they got to monetize their game, and it's a uh, those thing, games usually don't it. have microtrans. Those kind of RTS. Yeah, they generally release full, full. You yeah, know, fully done, with DLC, generally. you'll get DLC and yeah. packs and stuff for sure with RTSs, but you won't get microtransactions. Uh, well, could I mean, be remember... the first one they throw cosmetics in. <laughs> no, <geez. laughs> that would be something. Well, just, remember what, what StarCraft was doing, like, what, 20-plus years ago, where it was like they had yeah. the main game out, and then they had a full-on expansion in Brood War, yes. which, uh, which they put out, and it was essentially a whole... Whole secondary game. campaign yeah. with well, with that's new how DLC units. used to be, man. Exactly, but you paid right. for it back in the day. A lot and of that times, was, but now, that was worth it. That was totally well, worth yeah, an extra. And a lot of times or now, or... though, you get free DLC, but you just get more of it, but smaller packs, which I'm okay with too. And I like I've been burned so many times on season passes recently that like DLC yeah. has definitely uh, gone downhill. Um, but so have games at launch. Games in general have launch not, bad, yeah. but at launch, the launch of games is definitely, yeah. but that's because there's more games, bigger games, more competition. Everyone's trying to rush their games out. So it's, it's just the nature bugs. of the beast. <laughs> and then well, that's well, because they're trying to rush the bugs. games out. That's, that's the yeah. nature of the beast, though. Plus so everyone's the, trying uh, to one up the other. Well, there's also the online factor of dollar. it, too, where like, back, in too, the day, yes. back in the day, you couldn't you had to have it done at launch. Otherwise, you yep. couldn't, there was no updates. Right. So, I mean, as far as console. Games well, going, and, but... and these days also you have game d d developers prioritizing parts of games. I'm going to throw. So NHL just came out recently 
and uh, I only play like the arcade threes really on it. And they don't touch that though. It's always the same, but they don't they develop every other part of the game, but they don't want to increase that even though a ton of people play it. Same like with MLB, They're, the co-op is, is just broken. Like it always freezes, has issues, but when you go play one-on-one, you don't have those issues. So I know that, and that's, in, that's two sports games, I understand, but I think like Fallout 76 was the same way and Grand Theft Auto yep. and Red Dead, those were all the same way. Yep. They, you know, And that's the problem is these games are so big I'm sure we'll see it with Baldur's Gate 3 as an example because it's so massive and it's a smaller dev team um, that, uh, you know, these ga- that there's just so much that you have to do. So you have to prioritize what you, you fix uh, and what you don't fix. I think you have to be patient. Well, mm-hmm. one thing too, though, is that uh, well, I don't know. There's there's a bunch of this is a really deep topic. There's a lot of ways you can go into this. I think you do you can't yeah. really let the companies off the hook for saying that the games are larger than they used to be because uh, as, as much as that's very true, uh, the tools have evolved too. It's not like we're still yeah. coding games the same way we were 30 years mm-hmm. ago. So it's the, the exactly. it's easy. It's way easier to make a game today than it was than edit than it's ever been. So I think that it, you can't really let them off the hook there, but. There's yeah, there's so many factors that go into it that you know it's it's not it shouldn't be that surprising at this point. But I think when you look at stuff like Baldur's Gate three being like that perfect example, right, where they took their time, put it out on early access, and then now that it's finally at the fi- the final release, you've got a fairly complete product in ter- uh, in terms of yeah, they might do some more uh, extra content for it. Right. But, um, the game itself, the base game is good. And, and it's, there's no deal. There's no microtransactions and people are really, uh, uh, connecting to that. They're, they're appreciating it. So I think that could be set a nice precedent for the future. Yeah. It goes back to that, that old gaming where, you know, you just put the game on and play. You know, you don't it worry worked. about the, the <laughs> well, no, there are bugs. There are bugs. Oh yeah. There, and a few of the, a lot of those games. There are numerous bugs. bugs that we dealt with, but, but not so, like game. And the they, they were they were, were semi game yeah. breaking, but not like game crashing. You know, yeah. um, there was and, no and crash, crash we've also board, realized yeah. that now, like saving is just that much more important. It's like those old school games yeah, where, mm-hmm. like, every two minutes you're saving, you're saving. And we were not used to that anymore in games, you know, because we're like, oh, you die, yeah. oh, it just saves you back to the checkpoint. Not in this game. Hell no. No. <laughs> Hell no. No. So, I, I think it felt for as massive of a game it was, even with all those bugs, it felt very polished. Absolutely. Because it's a massive scale of a game. Oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, anyway. I, guess, I guess. Uh, Trine Other five, big games that's coming. Well, Trine 5 would oh, be yeah, the other Trine one we five. would talk about real quick that no one really mentioned. Uh, local co op kind mm-hmm. of. Uh, 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 yeah. steampunk looks all side scroller yeah. What's, it's, it's interesting it's really and in, this one's really interesting because they're it's a co-op side scroller series that i've heard is pretty solid right like whenever i oh. like delve deep into games to uh play on my switch the, i always see those pop up as being like those are great co-op games to play especially on the switch and they're so, always on sale. Uh, always there, on sale. They are. They, you can get them dirt cheap on sale. I, I've been tempted numerous times. But beside the point, that's uh, there. There is. Uh, uh, this is the fifth one, and so it's cool to see that they're taking a different approach than your general fantasy, and now doing something more steampunky while still keeping the essence of the series. And so it's something that um, I'll have my eye on, but uh, I wouldn't never well i would never that that's not what i'm going to say it would be a long while till i did play it just because i would like to probably play the other ones first mm-hmm. at some point and the developers a-okayed it is totally cool to invite the pizza guy in as player four yeah that was funny <laughs> so the marketing was fantastic definitely so when you when your papa john's or domino's or or whoever shows up at your door hand them a controller and say come on in buddy you're player four. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but I got three more pizzas delivered. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. You're playing Trine 5. I'll, my I'll my boss them. is going to fire me. <laughs> Too my bad. Me, don't gotta worry about to it. Out. <laughs> so the, the final oh, game we funny. wanted to talk, did want to like kind of delve into was Last Ronin. 
It's a big uh, one. It's a big one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Last Severely Ronin. Really hyped too. A lot of people are Whoa. really excited for this. It's it's going to be really interesting because uh, this is for the scale of game, right? First off, it's a next gen game they're making here, uh, and then it's also like I said, it's an adaption of Last Ronin that uh, th they first time when they have ever talked about this because it was rumored before mm -hmm. or reported on i think it's a better word to say and the word that they use to relate it to is god of war if they can even come close to what god of war did with this game it'll be great uh and it'll be really interesting to see if they can pull it off and, and multiplayer uh, god of i think war, it'd be great right? Wouldn't this no no, no single player a single no. player only a single player game? It's all about the last yeah. Ronin having because they'll follow the story of the single turtle that's left. Yes, and, and okay. so but isn't he recruiting others? Isn't that part of it? Well, yeah, he gets other people uh, to help mm -hmm. him along the way, but, uh, but it's not like necessarily if, in a main way. Like if they really wanted to, they could they could shoehorn something in like that. But I just I it doubt doesn't they sound would. like that's I the direction they they're going with yeah. it. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't think so. And so uh, I don't know. I, I think the idea is there. It sounds great. I will be honest though. I'm a little worried about how well they're going to pull it off though. Because. Um, who is is THQ Nordic well, developing it or just publishing? I just, okay, I okay, I'll get, I'll get to that. I'll, I think I'll, I saw there's a so, German studio that's doing it, right? It is the studio of there is last two games or the remake remasters of Destroy All Humans. Okay. It is a very weird bunch of games where none of them's like this game that they're making. <laughs> very odd. It is a very odd choice to tax them with such a big, a such a big IP. Second off, such a big, not even just the IP, right? Because you gotta mm -hmm. have smaller projects with a big IP, right? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like this, like Shredder's Revenge is a much smaller scale game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that doesn't require as huge of a team to try to make a big God of War scale that they're trying to bring up here. And. I don't know. I, I'm I'm going to be honest. Hearing the dev team that's behind it has me a little apprehensive on how well they'll actually be able to pull this off. Just because it, it's... I don't know. The idea of a this game that would be great if done right, and it's a huge deal, right? Huge next-gen mm -hmm. game based from arguably the biggest comic storyline that's come out in the past few years... And then trying to do a whole game off of it to do justice of it. Uh, and yeah, it just sounds like a huge project for a, what I consider a double A publisher. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations where the, yeah, the fans have high expectations. It's been a uh, this is one of the best storylines in in the Turtles history, I would say. So it's like people have mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. How they 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 really have their expectations high for any game that's going to come out bearing that name, and then like Absolutely. you said, they the track record hasn't been there with the, the developer. Now that doesn't mean that they can't necessarily uh, pull it off, but like you said, it's it's it, we can only go off what we've seen before. So it's it sets our expectations based on their past work, like a little, gives us a little apprehensiveness towards that. Um, I think we can all agree that, like, yeah, if they if they pull off what they're saying they're going to do, then that's that could be a really great game. Um, I think for me personally, I when when I hear God of War, that didn't really make me more excited. I, I think I would rather go yeah. for like a um, maybe like similar to like a Spider Man or a similar kind of open world game of that nature. Maybe even toss Whoa. in a little bit of Assassin's Creed or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm going a little bit far with I, saying that, but. <laughs> I, I think, I mean, you have to keep in mind though, like God of War, it's not exactly linear. It's more semi-open world as far as the latest ones go. Right? And God, God and of I War, think that's the ones they're more relating it to. Keep in more, keep in mind that it, um, I'm not saying that it's bad by any means. It's, I think it's a good game, but it's just like in terms of the style of what I would want for like that for a Last Ronin game. Um, it's not the first thing that came to mind. But as terms in terms of quality, if you're relating it to the quality, I'm all I'm all on board for that. 
by all mm -hmm. means. <laughs> I so obvious. So speaking of the quality, right? And something I just thought about is, you know, the games announce these projects way advanced in time, right? And yeah, mm -hmm. I'll get certain people hyped for the game, but that's ultimately not the reason why they do that. It's ultimately a reason to try to get talent on board with it. And so that's why you see such huge projects have this cinematic reveal and you won't see it for a few years. And they've already outright said, yeah, <laughs> yeah this project is at least a few years off. Yeah, it even says yeah. in development on the, the, the video. Yeah. Like, if you, here, we'll, we'll, like, look, they so have the title and then all of a sudden it's going to come up. No, 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 oh my God, mm -hmm. it's, when's it coming? When's it coming? Oh my God, in development. <laughs> so when you right. say getting getting talent so on board, uh, it, 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 in what sense? Are you, voice you mean acting like the voice and voice, actor, voice acting, voice developers, actor. artists, uh, I, all, everything yeah, you can think of developers. in game development? Because I, I would assume I that they, they, they would more, already have yeah. the the team on board. Not necessarily. No, no. You'll. I bet you no, if you go no, on to no. job boards for development and stuff, you'll start seeing Last Ronin stuff now that they've fully announced it. Interesting. And yeah. a lot of times rumors yes. of games coming out are found and uh, recognized because of job listings. Yes. So yeah. you'll see yeah. a job so that's listing. That's why a lot of times they... That's why they do stuff like this, right? That's why Elder Scrolls Six. I mean, we all knew it eventually mm -hmm. come, but like, that's why they said it to be more of... Not that we didn't already know it was coming, but them saying, hey, it is officially coming. We are in the very early stages of working on it now. We need people to make it. And you all can start getting excited now that it is officially pen and paper in the books, right? Mm -hmm. So, and so this is a similar situation as far as that goes. At least that's what it looks like to me. Uh, I'm looking forward. I mean, I hope they pull it off. I hope they can get the proper talent, right? And I hope they can learn a lot from how well the new God of Wars uh, worked, right? Because uh, I think those are some of the best games to come out in the past, I'll say, decade. I mean, one of my some of my favorite ever games in general, but like just past decade alone, they're amazing, right? One of them won Game of the Year, and the other one came very close to winning it a second time. So, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, they're fantastic games, and I think that kind of style of combat would work, right? Especially when you have... In those games, you have Kratos switching between his weapons. That would work perfect for this, switching between the four different turtle weapons, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. That's something that you need to have, for, for sure. Right. Or uh, I think even, like, a semi-open world, like, uh, especially Ragnarok. Ragnarok has these areas to where it feels a lot more open. They give you these, as you go through the uh, different Norse realms... Uh, there is some parts that feel more linear, but then there is more open areas. You can travel back to them and do different side quests in these open areas. And I think that would work great, right? So that gives you more of that feel that you're wanting, Geo, with, like, you know, feeling more open, right? And I think that yeah. would work great with, like, certain places in New York City. Um, or whatever they later call it, I think, because I don't think they exactly call it New York City in that. But, yes. Um, I don't know. It's a like, great idea and concept. They call, it. they call it, like, New Tokyo or... New Manhattan, maybe? New Manhattan, know. that's what it is. You're right, yes. I'm pretty sure that's it, yes. Anyway. But, uh, yeah, so, a great idea and concept. I hope they pull it off. I hope this trailer attracts... This is the optimistic side. I really hope the trailer attracts the proper talent so we can get this game. Yeah, um, and that's, that's and what we're hoping for. Yeah. 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 We're oh, always rooting for an underdog to do well. Absolutely. Do well. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be a great oh, yeah. game. It just needs to be a really good game. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think overall, though, it's uh, this conference, I think, or not conference, uh, presentation, I think it was pretty solid, right? Like, I think there's, you yeah. know, considering, you know, THQ is a smaller publisher, right? They're not like a big Ubisoft yeah. or anything like that. I think this is a pretty solid lineup of what I would classify personally as double A games. And so yeah. I'm looking forward to, um, you know, several of these titles caught my eye. I mean, I'd probably look into purchasing most of these titles, at least on sale. Um, but yeah, we'll see. 
And as an additional addendum at the very end of the presentation, uh, they made n note of mention that there are 37 games in development, and they showed 17 in the presentation, and they have well, 20 that ha still have not. Sh yeah, 17 we know about. 20 they have announced, or that there's stuff in development no, from studios with no official, no, no official titles. Yeah, 20 titles that we don't know about. And so, oh, I think they have that a great there's lineup even of more games. on the way. Yeah, Ab absolutely. There's always more on the way that we don't know. Um, industry is huge. Can't wait to see next year. Next year, or actually, THQ is. Do they do one annual or is it two annual? I forget. <laughs> I think they do two. I feel, if I remember correctly, it's two. So we should be getting another one around like what? Spring, maybe like spring ish. March, probably, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll February, have to wait and probably. see February, March. February, March. That. Yeah, so we'll see. I'm, we'll I'm see. interested to see if if we get maybe somewhere in the range of five to ten more new games. We'll see. Get, yep, yep. Showcase. Yep. Moving we'll see. on. We will see. Yeah. Next, next, next is uh, is some Batman. Yeah. Right. Everybody here likes Batman. Batman. One of the best ever superheroes or heroes, if not the best. He's getting his. A brand new mini. I mean, there's always a Batman series. There's always a new Batman mini series, right? That's that's a big thing with DC. Is they focus a lot on Batman coming. Uh, oh, I said wrong. Take it out. <laughs> right. Uh, there is a lot of Batman on the shelf, and so uh, <laughs> and that's part of their tactic. And so, uh, not surprising, we're getting a new mini series. But what's really cool is seeing what this mini series is about, while also uh, the talent that's behind this new book as well. And so th there's a new... Uh, this new series is called Batman Offworld. You see, uh, it's going to be... Well, I'll get into the description in a moment. But what is exciting about this is somebody that's primarily worked over at Marvel for, the, for a long time. Um, that's what he's mainly known for, is doing stuff over at Marvel, is now coming over to DC to write this book. And that's the name of Jason Aaron. Uh, if you're a comic fan or a comic guy at all, you probably know the name, right? Like, I'm sure this name pops out to Patrick because he wrote the uh, first half of the first half of the 2015 Star Wars comic run, um, the first Star Wars comics that came out. Um, yes, he did from, with the, from the canon. Um, he's done other Which, uh, recognizable pretty stuff. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. That the first run of Star Wars. Yes. Yes. I wouldn't um, he's say done it's several all good. Other things. But it, it, they gave some heavy hitters in that first run. Absolutely, absolutely. And so uh, they've done lots of other... Uh, or he's done lots of other books as well. Uh, he, he's worked on... Uh, he's done the latest run of Avengers that just recently wrapped up. I read the first arc of that. I enjoyed it. One of the big things he's known for is a Thor run that is really good. He's actually the one that introduced Gore the God Butcher. Hmm. Interesting. And so, uh, yeah. And so, uh, and, I, and I, I was double checking this really quick, and I think he may have written. Oh, no, never mind. I was thinking of somebody else. But yes. So, uh, yeah, he's done a lot of things, is the point I was getting to. Uh, he rarely ever done anything with DC. He's been on like a book or two with them before, but that's all. So now he's coming back to DC. For a six-issue limited series where he's with artist Doug... Uh, Minky. I'm probably butchering this. Minky. And so uh, his main t credits is Detective Comics and Green Lantern. Um, I've seen some of his work in Green oh, Lantern. John loves Great Detective stuff. Comics. I mean, Detective Comics is an absolute classic. Who doesn't love Detective Comics? <laughs> oh, Detective Comics. And so, uh, but yeah, so this oh, mini series it has this description. I mean, I'll just go ahead and read it right off from what it says. Yep. Um, it says a routine night in Gotham City for a young Batman. Interesting, it says young Batman proves to be anything but routine when the crime fighter is confronted with a sort of foe he's never faced before, one from beyond the stars. A universe of possible alien threats leads Batman to make a daring decision to venture alone into the far reaches of the cosmos for the very first time where the Dark Knight will face the fight of his life. <laughs> and if you look at one of the covers, uh, you actually see him in, like, a big... 
I guess that's going to be the big bad that's kind of in the back in the, one of the pictures with the aliens kind of like pointing guns around him and mm-hmm. he's on some uh, uh, sort of, I don't know, teleporter machine or something that it looks like to me. So it's very interesting that, uh, I don't know, just this whole take of Batman in space uh, <laughs> in his own solo series. Right? It sounds so ridiculous. Is that going to be a, really uh, shouldn't be, though. <laughs> a Poison Ivy variant? A Poison Ivy variant? Look at you picture know, I, number three. I'm thinking that's a new person. Probably, the first person but... that reminded me of, though, wasn't Poison Ivy, although I could see that now that you say that. I was thinking more Starfire. Oh, okay. Okay. Especially Ooh, like the more orange skin. Yeah. I don't I don't think it's that though. But oh, yeah, yeah. I mean it could be related. Um Are we getting Joker in space? Mm-mm. Joker in space. I don't no. think so. Sorry. It's in it's really space, interesting. No one the can hear you laugh. Yeah, the the play the he'd be the <laughs> Killer uh, Clowns in space. He, be? he would be <laughs> the clown prince in Look. In Killer darkness. Clowns from Outer Space is going to be a game eventually, so... Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Looks awesome. Anyway. Y- yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting, though, because it's... Uh... It's interesting, this one with him, with the, the, like, the cowl and the... the, and the, the it looks like the new... Well, yeah, because it's... Are you talking about the one with the... Uh... Oh, that one, yeah. I mean, here's the thing: is so many of these, I guess, don't give off space feels, at least no. initially, right? Except for like, like one, I think yeah. the one, and you know, the last one makes it look more hoary with yeah. those. Uh, and there's oh, the black the and white one, of that off. same one. That's cool. Number seven is mm-hmm. actually the black and white of the. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what will come out of this series. I'm. I don't know, just. I'll, I'll take more Batman. I'll take ridiculous uh, ideas in the comics. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Is they uh, allow creators to try something new. They allow something, you know, you can tell unique stories at a much cheaper cost, right? Because it's like, who, who would have ever actually pitched this to be an actual movie and actually work? You know what I mean? Well, and what... so um, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. One thing that's interesting, though, is that this is not the first time that Batman's been to space, though. No. Right. <laughs> that's right. so weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, like, the first... too. But it said but young first... Batman. It said you don't really Batman. see him in the traditional, like, space yeah. suit. Though. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting, interesting to see how they tackle this, because I'm curious, I guess, potentially what this could or could not wreck on, right? Because, I mean, here's the thing. is DC, DC's continuality continuality is just so confusing it's not there um because of how many they they have so many reboots they keep so many things they don't keep so many things sometimes they reference things that like people i guess thought wasn't in the continuality or whatever so like there's all sorts of things that goes on uh with their whole timeline so it's like i want i guess this is what they're setting up as the new uh upcoming one uh or new origin as far as how he first time he went into space so it'll be interesting to see how uh they tackle a young story i i do find that really interesting though because you're saying a young batman so this probably means he probably doesn't have any sidekicks yet that's a good right point. Mm-hmm. and so uh he'd still be like a smaller scale or not smaller scale but like n- not I wouldn't imagine him to have all this crazy technology yet, is what I'm getting to. Well, to kind of like able to uh, to... Long Halloween Batman a little bit. He doesn't have... He's not... He's right, when I think yet. young Batman, I think Robert Pattinson's Batman. Yeah. So, But maybe this exactly. one's a little farther along. And so um, I'm very interested in seeing how it comes together. Um, Jason Aaron's a writer that I have enjoyed his work of everything I've read. Um or at least mostly. I I can't think of anything bad right off the bat, but I have pretty much enjoyed all his main stuff of what I've checked out. Um, one thing I think is interesting when you do a, a younger story is uh, it allows you to, in, in a way, make it make give your character some flaws to make them more interesting because you have a character Mm -hmm. like batman that's so established and that's one of the things people always say about batman it's you know there's the the Mm -hmm. old joke of uh you know could batman beat so and so well yeah if they had if he had enough time to plan 
because right. just, <laughs> he could come out of any situation. So it's like, how do you combat that? And then one of the easy ways to do that, well, you could argue that maybe it's not easy, but one of the ways to do that is just put him in the past where when he's a young guy still learning and he doesn't have mm -hmm. all those skills yet and he's yeah. still making mistakes, he's still learning. And if when you do that right, it can be an interesting character study and uh, uh, kind of show you how he got to be the... The, the kind of badass that we all know and that works mm. for a lot of different characters not just batman but that's in this scenario it's yeah i think that could be interesting if they pull it off in that sense like they've done in other yeah. others uh precisely yeah <laughs> yeah I, I, I completely agree it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they uh pull it all off for sure i'm well, well i mean we'll just have to stay tuned and see yeah, uh, so folks, we're going to go ahead and take another commercial break right here, and uh, we'll be back to uh, talk about a few more topics upcoming. If you haven't seen the movie The Blind Side, definitely check it out. It's a fantastic movie, but there's apparently some controversy around the, the NFL, former NFL player who the movie is based around. So we'll get into that. We'll also talk about the sad passing of a beloved voice actor from a beloved animated series that is getting a reboot. So folks, stay tuned for that, and we'll be back shortly after this break. All right, and ads, yeah. Ads in progress. Okay, I see that there. Yep. All right, I'm going to go use the restroom. I'll I was, Yeah, I was able to, even though it said a certain amount, I was able to click it and run it early, and then it cancels the one upcoming. So that's nice. Awesome. Yeah. That helps. Awesome. Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, so let's see what we got next here. So are we going to go? Uh, we're done on that topic then? Yes. Okay. We're gonna go blindside, and then we're gonna do uh, King of the Hill. Let's pull that up. Do, do, do. Jamie, pull that up. Hmm? Yeah, I've got both of them. Uh, the ESPN one first reported it, and then Variety pulled off of it. So ESPN is the original story. And we went from eight to six to four viewers, so this will be perfect wrapping these two do these two topics and then wrap up. We just got another follower because nine and he just followed. All right, I'm back. Minute 15. Sweet. Yeah, I do like this ad system. Like, you're able to... Because I saw you struggling there. So I'm like, I, I wrote the seven minutes, and I saw you, be like, start running out of things to talk about. We definitely didn't have enough time for another yeah. topic. So that where it's perfect that I can click yeah. that if we're early. So I didn't need to snooze, but I, it's a good idea to snooze early. Yeah. And then if we don't need it extra, we can run it early still. How much do we have left to talk about now? Two topics. And Two then topics, okay. Wrapping up. I like this format. One big topic, everybody chooses one topic. This has worked out, I think, much it a little deep. It lets you go a little deeper with each topic. Exactly. So eight, 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 eight rush topics, you get four deep topics. Correct. And look, we're almost pushing the same time length, so it works. Well, out. and that's the point, is... We would have gone way over with more topics, especially talking about exactly. the affiliate way over stuff too. and having ads and yeah. Yeah. So now we'll go just over two and that's fine. Yep, yep. What are we at now? One hour forty, basically. One hour. Okay. 30. And I know we're gonna try that up for back. the YouTube. What's going on? Welcome back everybody. 
Thank you for hanging out during that commercial Ooh. break. Hope you were able to refill your drink, your snacks, and empty your bladders. We're going to talk about some football, sort of. So back in, uh, let me double check when I can't remember. Now I got to go back and double check back my research. 2009, the movie The Blind Side came out. It was about a, uh, oh, here we go. a player named Michael Ower. He uh, had just been drafted in the NFL, and there was this cr- great, you know, heartwarming story about him that he, uh, you know, was adopted by this. He was an African American, you know, and he was adopted by this white couple, and you know, every in Alabama, and he went to Al- University of Alabama to play football. Is this whole big to do? And, and um, actually, did he go to Mississippi State? Uh, where did he go to? Where did he go to school? I mean, I, God, it's been so long. It's uh, been so long. It's been so long. Uh, oh, boy. But now you're back. I, I had it, and now I lost Here it. Here to stay. College. There we go. We're back from uh, that break. Mississippi. He went to, to University of Mississippi. Okay, he did. He went to Ole Miss, as it's called. Ole Miss. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, Southern schools are all about their boosters and donors and stuff. So, uh, this family that adopted him had some ends at Ole Miss and he was able to go play football there and they made a movie about it. And it was all heartwarming. Everybody happy. Sandra Bullock won an Oscar for it. Yeah. Good old North Carolina girl. Now there's some controversy about it. So. Yep. What Mr. Orr. Right there, you see him right there. Hey, everybody. Is he alleging is. is that the family, the Tuahis, made millions off of him and actually tricked him and never adopted him and had him sign paperwork that put him into conservatorship. And he claims he didn't is. see any yep. money off the $300 million that the blind side made. And I think the reason this got big is because we just came out of the Britney Spears conservatorship. Yes. I was just going to say, it wasn't that what happened to her, but yeah, so he apparently yeah, was. Yeah, and that was a long, drawn-out legal battle for years. Well, the Tuahis are all... The Tuahis are, are uh, denying it all, obviously. Um, they are claiming that they adopted him still. Uh <sighs> This is a so this to me is a very tricky situation because if this is true, like what does it say about this film? That's what I want to know. Like, how is this film going to be remembered? Um, that that this this kid was taken advantage of to basically for this. Right here to if make true, this. If true, be it for this true. for three hundred million big ones. Well, I heard then, uh, a yeah. few things about this. Now, now, granted, I you would know more about this, Chris, because I I be honest that I didn't watch the film when it came out because mm-hmm. I wasn't I wasn't a big I'm still not a big football fan, but uh, and, and so I and I don't uh, my knowledge is kind of limited, but. From what I heard, one of the, some of the big complaints about his, that he had about the film adaptation was that it kind of portrayed him as being like slow mentally, mm-hmm. and uh, yes. and then and then just the I think that was the main takeaway, and then a few w- different ways they they portrayed, which obviously in Hollywood they're they're always going to take liberties, but there's the question of like how much did was that uh factored into by the parents and stuff i don't know really if they had much input to the story at all but yeah yeah so in a 14 page petition 14 pages he basically says that they never adopted him and instead tricked him into ceding his authority to make business deals by making the couple his conservators at by when he turned 18 it shouldn't they that be something that adopted him when he was 16. So two years they claim of, they claim they adopted him. Yeah, they claim they adopted him. They claim saying. this is all bogus. People are, are coming out and saying, oh, Michael Ower is probably broke. That's why this is going on. I mean, the guy played in the NFL for a while. 
um, and made plenty of money. But as we know from other athletes and actors, that money can go very quickly. Uh, very fast. But, I mean, there there's claims that not only did the parents get money, but that the kid, like the, their actual kid, got money too. Like, their actual... <laughs> it's, yeah, it's... It's very, uh, I, it just smells so much like Britney Spears that I'm, I will not be surprised if this is true. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm it, really worried what it's going to do for the legacy of the movie. I'm really worried what it's going to do for the legacy of uh, like stories. There, there's like there's already stuff around this movie now I've been yeah, reading about online. There's controversy around the movie now. Yeah. There's people going, I don't know if you guys heard uh, within the last 24 hours. People, I guess Sandra Bullock had won an Oscar for that movie. Yes, as best actress. And the fans are now going after her, saying she should return her Oscar. That's terrible. And it's like she was just an actress told to do a role in a movie. Read a script, yes. Read a script, portray the character, and she, from what everything I've heard, she she acted her heart out for this. She did. It was she was amazing in it. And the guy who portrayed Michael Orr in the film, I forget the actor's name. Uh, he came out and he fully defended her and said, look, Sandra Bullock's husband just passed away weeks ago. Yeah, that was sad. And now you all are turning around and coming after her, telling her she should return her Oscar. Yeah. And yeah so, I'm sure that's so the last thing on her mind. <laughs> he has fully gone to bat for her saying, leave her alone right now. She's already dealing with enough crap right now. Yeah, his the actor's name so. is Quentin Aaron. He's not really known for... Much not a whole anything lot, right? he's got a lot of projects coming up so he plays a lot of smaller roles and look like he uh he get he plays a ton of roles but a ton of big roles and but the cojones for him to come out to the press and tell everybody to leave her alone that's yeah. some brass balls on that I, guy. I, I hope I hope uh, somebody sees that and tries to hire him for a project because I know he he's willing to speak his mind and and be open with with not just the public but you know the press and and stand up for his former castmate. I mean, they made that mm-hmm. movie years ago, and he's he's still willing to go to bat for Sandra Bullock. They must still be really good friends. So good on him. Yeah, I because th- there's not a lot of that these days. You won't see a lot of former castmates willing to stand up and defend their former castmates necessarily all the time anymore it's topics like that that are why i wanted to bring this topic up yeah it's it's parts of the topic you know uh, you know people i want to send a message to people who are offended by this whole thing and could be mad at to he's don't take it out on the actors that played in the movie please like that's ridiculous don't um I, I think this is a great, though, narrative on, especially, like, I think back to uh, Lori Laughlin and the whole Stanford situation yeah. where, like, you're a millionaire. Um, the toys have tons of money. Why do you need to do this and take advantage of people yeah. like this? I don't get it. I don't understand it. I, 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 there needs to be more awareness of it. Uh, and good on Michael Orr if it's true, and the actors if it, if it is true. If it's not true, shame on Michael Orr. <laughs> it's another it, Jesse it's, Smollett. It's very case much. Then, um, you know? <laughs> it's it's like Jesse Smollett, and it's also uh, very much like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard stuff, where mm-hmm. just just wait until the trial happens if it gets all the way you know to a court of law and. So let's see where the cards play as they lie. I mean, yeah, you would think in, that, that the would end, be the something. Facts are win. You, you would think that something would be like that would be pretty easy to prove either way because, like, yeah. how can they just? You can't really fake an adoption, can yeah, you? Yeah, like, no, there's know. paperwork. No, no trust me. There's always as paperwork. someone who is adopted, there's paper, all kinds <laughs> of paperwork. Trust me, paperwork, correspondences, interviews. Like, you got to go through. But again, money is power. Yep. And sadly. Spencer, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Any thoughts? Um, I don't. I don't really have any because I didn't really keep up with the situation at all. I mean, just but, from uh, from your 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 first impression thoughts. Damn it! I mean, I, I, it's it's definitely not a great situation. I mean, I, I I don't know what to say beyond that. Like it's. 
definitely seems a bit messed up that I guess uh, certain people are getting more money than they should, I guess. But, um, I don't know. I, I really don't have that much. The dingus, but, uh, everybody. I completely understand. <laughs> uh, I don't completely, like, I, like I said, well, I don't fair, completely... like, you don't necessarily want to comment if right, you don't like, know I, all the facts, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, don't, I don't know about yeah. it, right? You just said a little bit, and I honestly wasn't even uh, tuning in uh, <sighs> to all that completely. Terrible. And so Terrible. Uh, I know. What do you Terrible. expect that he's he's Mister? I don't like sports. But this is about <laughs> movies. Not just, this is nothing is to do though? with sport. Yes, <laughs> this is nothing to do with the sports. Side I, I of guess it. The, the, nothing the to do with the sports side of it. It has to do with the movie the side of it. The movie yeah. side's an extension of the of the real life situation. Yeah, but it, it's to do with the yes, the nothing royalties to do with, off the film. Correct? Yes, yeah, exactly. Ultimately, it's exactly what it's about. Nothing to do with sports. Nothing. <laughs> and, and if it is true, you know, like this could extend to some, you know, some stuff beyond, you know, just the film. This might, I don't know, maybe they being in a conservatorship secretly that maybe that had something to do with how much money he was making from the NFL. No, no, not at all. No, 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 no. Because once okay. the NFL, they don't mess with those contracts at all. Okay, no. So they would, he would get paid directly in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Unless there was some weird legal. Well, we'll binding. find out. Yeah, that's the and thing. And I'm sure like, some of, that'll that'll be a very small undertone, but that may come up in trial. Like, hey, how much was he making as a player in the NFL? You know, stuff like that. Well, it depends. So. Did you actually get a chance to look at any of that data from when he was a player? Like, I, see, like, I don't really. He was making? He's an, and that's the thing. I yeah, his contracts. He's an offensive lineman. His contracts. He made enough money. Like that. He what made he made in money, the NFL yeah. had nothing to do with the movie. Like you have to th- remember, a lot Separate, of athletes yeah. make more money off of endorsements and things like this than they do from playing and sponsorships. Yeah, and yeah. So, 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 this could be true. You know, you never. This definitely could be a uh, something that is true because like people do this all the time. World is I mean, not he's a nice neck place. Out on the line. He's really putting his neck out on the line he, to be willing to even make the statement. So, well, some people uh, you could also, I mean, he, he's a football player. He's been hitting the head he's many a times. Player. Yeah, so <laughs> he could be a little out there. You know, you never know. Uh, it funny. wouldn't be the first time. It, yeah, and it could be. Days. It could be a situation where he, it's it's uh, he's just making a stance, like a um, mm-hmm. a moral thing, right? Like if mm-hmm. that's what he believes, if he be, if he yeah. truly believes it, and uh, he wants to stand up for himself, it might not just might be a, a, so much about the money as it is just him standing up for himself and what he believes in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's tough to say because yeah, well, we're in such an early point in the story. It's like no one really knows what the hell is going on. It's just. We, we know the two sides, I guess. That's about it. And in a lot of cases like this, um, he might still be really well off with money. He might be doing, you know, perfectly That's what I'm fine. Saying, yeah. And like, like you were saying, he's standing up for himself as a moral thing. And mm-hmm. if he were to win the case and get money back, he might turn around and just donate that to charity. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. So, it's a wait and see thing. So, I mean, yeah, he could be totally, you know, perfectly well off and he's doing just fine for himself. So, he just thinks this is. They screwed him over, and he has to right or wrong, you know? Yeah, so going from one crappy situation to another, oh. <laughs> um, Gosh dang it, Christopher. Uh, so, man, this one's Oh, hard. yeah, this one, okay. Yeah, this one's hard. Um, Johnny Hardwick, voice of yep. Dale... From the King of the Hill, <laughs> Joseph's father, but not really Joseph's father, the King of the Hill, has passed away. The voice of of Bale has passed away. He passed away last week, a couple of days ago, eight, on the eighth. So, eighth. so yeah, like a week and a day. Away. Week and a day. And uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week because uh, we didn't really bring it up until today. It was pretty sudden, too. It was pretty sudden. Uh, they 
had already done work on a couple of episodes for the revival that's coming up on Hulu, which I, I love that Hulu's you know, Futurama. We're going to get King of the Hill. Man, yep. the OG animation domination is coming back. I love it. Love it. All love it. Hulu. Love it. All on Hulu. I'm very excited for this. It's going to be very sad because I know they're going to have to figure out. They're going to just kill them off. You can't recast them. Cannot. Do you think they would be willing to recast? No. Or do you think this is a, this is a case where they're going to kill him? You think they're going to kill sure? him off? I I, am... I think if they do, I think if they do, it'll be in really bad taste. Yeah, it's it's really tough when you're in a situation like that because it's like you're kind of screwed either way. Because if you kill yeah. him off, then it's like it, it's weird, you know. It's it's like it, it's almost especially because the person actually died. It's it's almost like you're. Yeah you're killing them again, you know, well, not that he was killed, but you know what I mean? Like you're, so it's, it's a very tough situation, how to handle that. Um, and it could be a thing where like, what do you do? Do you just have them off screen for the rest of the series? Do you recast? Like there's so many different ways you could take it. Each one is going to have its downsides. So that's something that they're going to have to navigate going into this. But, um, he gets no, a I job was, in another town. <laughs> yeah, or so, you know, there's so many different things they could do. I think this definitely, I, as soon as I've, re I've read this information, mm -hmm. I was like, I literally, it was just out loud, just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> because yeah, they just got the series announced to come well, back. Because, like, I was a huge fan of, of King of the Hill. Uh, I still watch it. It's, it's back yeah. up on, uh, yeah, it's on, I guess it's on Hulu uh, for you guys. It in, is on Hulu. Yep, in, yep. In, uh, in Canada, it's on uh, Disney Plus. So it'll it'll move to Disney Plus eventually for the States as well. And uh, so I it's been. I don't know with this recent news here lately. Regardless, uh, the point being is. is the point being is that it that I've been rewatching it recently because of that fact. It's just been easier because yeah. this it hasn't been on uh, any streaming platform in the past, to my knowledge. If Not it really was, it was until now. If maybe so briefly, it's been nice going Netflix? back. I remember it might have been on Netflix briefly. I, I don't think so, but either way, if, so. even if it was, it's been a while. Um, so it, it's it's been nice to go back and rewatch those episodes, and it it got me thinking about that. It was like, oh, are they gonna? do another uh series because they've been talking about it uh mm -hmm. you know probably since the last one ended and uh there have been rumors and things like that and then finally they they're t they announced that they're doing it and uh they, they've been kind of tight-lipped on it to a certain extent but you know my judge has his other yeah. projects you know he's had to be this and which is ongoing and things like that and uh I think one of the big th th talks about the new show coming back was, okay, who's going to come back and do it? Because when you have these shows that have been gone for a certain amount of time, there's some people might just not be interested anymore. Uh, there might be contract disputes, people that want to be paid more. There's all kinds of reasons why someone might not be coming back. But then when you look at the, uh, the lineup of people that have been said that they've agreed to come back for King of the Hill, it's almost essentially the whole cast. Um, with a few notable exceptions, you know, we had people like, uh, I believe, Brittany Murphy, who passed away, and uh, Lucky, who is, uh, oh, God, I don't have it right up in front of me. He was a, uh, who the fuck was Lucky? Someone help me out on this. I don't remember. I have no idea. But uh, he passed away as well. Uh, Tom Petty. Tom Petty. Thank you. Um Thank you to me. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they obviously they're not going to be back, but then you have most of the original cast. I guess the only admission beyond them was, would have been Khan, which is for reasons that we're not going to get into right now. We don't have, we, we don't have enough time for that, <laughs> but uh, you know, and then that, I think when you see what they've done with Futurama, it shows that there is a possibility to bring back these shows without ruining what, that had the heart and soul of the original and so that made me even more excited which because uh, i've been enjoying futurama but then then you get hit with something like this and this is something that really puts a damper on it on the sense of like dale was one of the key characters in the original show and his antics and everything that he got into it's like you you always wanted to see his reaction to what was going on in the plot and yeah, they said 
the, I think the exact wording was he had filmed or recorded a couple of episodes where what that means, we don't know. Mm. Could be literally two, could be two or three, could be three or four, but he's not going to be, he didn't, hadn't recorded everything. So they're going to have to address that somehow. And it's, it's very unfortunate. Um, yeah. <laughs> that also tells me they've been actively recording too within the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah. That means so, I they mean, are in they're they're not in pre production, they're in production. Absolutely. I think um I think we were talking a little about this before stream, but it's like a lot of these shows they'll especially when it comes to animations, how the process will go is they'll have the voice recordings done before the animation even is. So it's not necessarily oh, yeah, like a case. Some shows are different, right? But uh, it's not necessarily yeah. a case where they'll have the uh, uh, the images on screen to react to. Um, it's not, not always li done like that. So Normally they use, uh, what do they call it? Animatics. Yeah, like a storyboard or storyboard or something they go frame by frame of the story and they try to at least give them like a, a some sort of idea of what their character is going to look like on the screen roughly so they know how to act off that or what's the emotion of the character in this moment you know how should i portray the the dialogue because you could have the same piece of dialogue and portray it 30 different ways so yeah those those animatics and storyboards definitely go a long way to helping uh, voice actors do what they got to do, and of course, you know they'll they'll try a few different you know takes at the same line. So, yeah, this this is a really sad situation, especially since they just started official production now in, in the booth recording stuff, and he was a few episodes in and then passed away. Like, how do you handle that situation? Do you go back and and recast for that season? No. Do you just use his you dialogue for the few you episodes you have? After the episode, you, off, you have to you... rewrite and kill him off. You have to. Do you send or... them off into the sunset? Do you so... tell, just write him say, like, like a Gina Carano situation where well, you're like, no, 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 oh, no, no, she's no. in the New Republic no. now. So, well, that's the thing. Gina Carano was different because they semi-canceled her. Um, this yeah, is but semi, just semi. semi sure. Well, yeah, because she's done other no, stuff. They, they she's still done. Her. Yeah, she's there's still a, done and other there's stuff, a, there's always a chance that she could yeah, come back. Anyway. Yes. So anyway, my point Anyways. is, is that they're not going to do that. My Dale Gribble is a conspiracy theorist. There's a million things they can do to Dale to get rid of it's him. It's great because he's he's so he's so. Psycho. So there's a, they they can be like, oh, the government came and took him away. You know, things yeah. like that. Like, but like you. Quote, when I say kill him off, you write him off is the right term. Off, write him off, write him yeah. off yeah. is the correct term in, I in, think the, in film the, and TV. The big issue with that is that it, you're, we're going to be literally, we're already processing the grief of him actually dying. And so that, that's really the trouble when you have to write a uh, something like that is, do we really want to have to relive it in in, in the character too? And, and I guess it depends on everybody processes grief in different ways. So it, it'll have to, I, I think the the writing staff would really have to take a look at that and see how they feel about it and how, what the best way is to kind of pay tribute to him. And it might depend on also what he would have wanted. He might have, I mean, he wasn't an old guy. He was only 64, but it's possible he, um, some people talk about these things like, oh, if I ever die too early, you know, make sure you write me into the script that I got taken away by the government. <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Something. Well, that's the thing. Yes. Maybe he had something in his will. Who knows? You know. <laughs> uh, but you were saying, I mean, he 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 loved the character. You were saying you were at his YouTube yeah. and he was doing all these songs in Dave's yeah. voice. That's that's up amazing. until up until a year ago. He you can go onto his YouTube channel and uh, he has cover songs of famous songs like the Beatles and. Uh, doing the under the great dale grubble voice and he'll put on the, awesome. the he'll put, put on the shades and the in the ball cap and everything he plays up the character he so does. he absolutely uh stood by it you know he wasn't ashamed of the character he was he was all for it and that's i think if you go back into the history of how he got the character in the first place that totally holds up because it's uh king of the hill is totally a texas show it's a show yep. written by uh people from texas and created and starring people from Texas. Mike Judge is from Ireland, or not Ireland, sorry, Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And so was uh, so was Johnny Hardwick. He's from born mm -hmm. and born born and died in Austin, Texas. So mm -hmm. they're Texas Texas boys. He is so Dale to speak. Gribble. 
the, yeah, is, yeah. So, you know, like, and that's apparently how he got the job. It's like he was a stand up comedian at the time. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, oh, uh, he's and so he, he, um, he had was doing a gig and Greg Daniel saw him per- perform and after and was like, Oh, Hey, we're writing this show about, uh, about people from Texas. And he had told the story about his dad. And I guess that's what it was where hmm. they were like, Oh, that you would fit right in. And they hired him on as a writer initially. And um, which he continued to do, but then he also auditioned for the part of Dale and uh, he, and he got it. And then he carried that on into into the role like the, he kind of changed the the way dale was written um he, he kept like the the thing about him being a conspiracy theorist that was in the initial pilot mm-hmm. but there was other aspects of his character that he added and he brought to the role as well so yeah that dale wouldn't have been the character that he was if not for johnny hardwick agreed agreed i think that was a beautiful way to to close this topic by by you saying that that was perfect uh, absolutely that, such a sad yeah. situation i hope they can salvage something good from it but we'll see yeah so yeah but rest in peace and god bless yeah so 100 yeah. percent. so folks this has been a great episode so far uh maybe we'll we'll hang out for a little bit longer than we usually do to to celebrate you know um maybe a couple more minutes uh why don't we yeah. here's what we'll do first of all uh we'll do uh <laughs> do yellow's thing uh, uh stars and wishes stars and wishes stars and wishes for stars and wishes dramatic. live that's what stars we're doing wishes live that's what we're doing that's what we're all right doing. all right all right i'll begin this all right all right stars and okay, for anybody any uh oh. anybody that's watched this and i've noticed uh you know, we've been experimenting with different ways as far as how we want to do this, right? And I think so far this new uh, flow that we have with this episode, I think, is better than the previous three. All right. And so I really like this. Um, and, uh, you know, notice we don't necessarily have our what are we playing because it kind of felt tacked on at the end. We have, if we want to highlight a game, it's at the beginning now. And now... Mm-hmm. We're also not trying to fit in as many topics. Uh, it's great having this one big topic where we all got to delve deep into that big topic of uh, THQ's uh, reveals that they did. And then we each chose our like main one that we each really want to talk about and we were each uh, passionate to talk about. Yeah. And so I think this is a great format going forward. I'm really looking forward to uh, many future shows and episodes uh, utilizing this topic. Hey and, uh, Spencer, or, topic, where, but where, the space, but yeah. where are these episodes gonna be from now on though? Live. Oh, there you go. That's a good that's a good segue too. You. So, you know, originally this week we weren't gonna stream on Twitch, or at least this episode wasn't gonna be on Twitch. We were gonna go put it on YouTube. I was gonna make a YouTube little uh or not youtube short well yeah Yeah. i was gonna make a short put it up on youtube and everywhere else and you know promo that hey we're gonna do this podcast this week on youtube i'm glad i didn't because uh they didn't let us uh right now yeah their their settings were stupidly messed up but we're not gonna talk about that. well you know that's a whole whole other other story whole other story but point is we now have uh we're at affiliate now and uh anyway with this uh going back to the youtube i don't, I don't know why i was there uh so oh, for good. the youtube aspect uh we we think it'd be better to have this show on youtube talk for various shows reasons on YouTube that we discussed and gaming on twitch that's really going to be the model, yes I think, essentially for... essentially is what we're going to be doing yes exactly and so um yeah so and, and there's various reasons as to why we're doing that but that, that's definitely what we're doing and so, you know, they'll still, we're going to be trying to do a consistent Twitch schedule, you know, having at least one of us game every now and then, several of us, you know, it all depends on scheduling and all that, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun once we get it all figured out on all that. But, you know, I think it's, it, I, I do like the way it worked out though, you know, because uh, we, we had our celebration stream here as part of like where we get our talk show, most of the people came in at the beginning. So it was yep. like a great point for us to all go in and you know just have that moment of celebration because it, it, it's great right like you know this channel wasn't always red shirts but i feel like most of this has been earned 
with us being red shirts now right and mm -hmm. so uh it means a lot, I think, to all of us now that we're at this point of an affiliate, you know, that means we can start making a little something, you know, it makes us feel that, hey, we're actually doing something now at this point. And so I'm really glad that uh, we're at this point. I'm very uh, thankful for everybody that's come by and supported all of us, um, you know, whether it's this channel or our own individual endeavors. And, uh, yeah, I'm just very glad to be at this point. I think this is a great way to actually celebrate it because I know we were initially thinking about doing a separate affiliate celebration stream. But I think, um, you know, the way this turned out, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Um, and, yeah, um, I don't know. So that's my, my stars, big stars, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess I need to come up with a wish here. Yeah, any kind of wish. Any kind of wish? Um... I don't know. I, I was I'm very happy with how this turned out. I don't okay. have any big uh, ones. Yeah. Uh, may, maybe the only maybe the only wish I'd say is maybe spend another couple minutes talking about Ahsoka. But I know we're kind of pinned with the uh, the ad break uh, there and yep. taking longer at the beginning than we want to. But uh, I mean, I still think it turned out good as is. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Geo. Any stars? Any wishes? Um, I don't. I don't really know if I. I, I about that that whole format to be honest <laughs> but but to be i guess uh, what i will say is uh yeah i want to echo uh spencer's sentiments that uh i want to thank everybody who has joined us in this journey so far i think it's been um a great start to to uh to things and you know we're still finding our footing this is really the first time i've personally delved this far into the whole uh uh, streaming and podcasting and everything of that nature. So this is a, a, a huge learning experience for me, and I'm. Re it's it's taking a, a lot a lot time. How do I put this? I'm just still finding my footing, I guess you could say. You so go. it's yeah. it's something that um, it's definitely very exciting. But I'm I guess more than anything, I'm just thankful for everybody who's even spent a minute of their time with us, and that means a lot because that's something that you you can't get it more of so the fact that anybody would uh give us any of that time is something that i we can never really repay but we're damn well gonna try <laughs> so yeah just uh thanks to everybody and uh i hope we can uh continue and improve as time goes on excellent excellent i'll go next uh my stars of the chat, like rock on you guys for being interactive and, and hanging out. Anybody who's still there, thank you for, for sticking around for the whole whole show uh, on our first affiliate stream. Wow, that's cool to say. I never thought in the years that I've been doing this so far that I would get here because it felt like it as every time I would take a step forward, I was taking two steps back with stuff. Uh, so this is amazing. Again, just to echo, thank you to everybody who supported us, supported me throughout the years over on YouTube, and now come over to Twitch. And again, as Spencer mentioned, this show will now, we're going to try it over on YouTube, but we're going to have plenty of streams over here, plenty of streams over there. And then the streams from here will end up there as videos as well. So it's just going to be a whole lot of content that we hope you guys can enjoy and that's my wish my wish is that uh you all enjoy all our content and and keep supporting us and uh i wasn't really gonna plug this but we got the charity month coming up so i'm very excited for that we're not sure where that's being streamed yet for the whole weekend but we know throughout the month we're gonna be streaming at both places so uh stay tuned for that and patrick your turn to wrap us out to close us out with your hopes and wishes for stars all right wishes. so i got two I got two big stars tonight. First of all, our first star, thank you, thank you, thank you, the audience, because without you guys and clicking that follow button, we would not be here as affiliate today. Um, the guys got it all set up. They took care of the back end and everything. So without your support over the last few years, or even just with the rebrand going into you know our, our Red Shirts Remaster brand, this seriously would not be possible. We would still be scrounging for views and follows. So you guys that were quick to support us and share us with your friends, that means the world to every single one of us here on the uh, Red Shirts panel. So thank you guys so much. Um, and second of all, um, things are looking up for us right now. I, I would say there's a lot of good content coming down the pipeline as our other big star. So 
we're, we're in a very good position right now. We're very happy with the content we're producing. We're still playing around with format, and that's fine. We're, you know, we're still finding our footing, and ultimately, we're here to entertain you guys. So whatever you guys want, please let us know over on social or Discord, because the more input you guys give us to, towards the content you want us to, it, whether it's the stories we're you know following on the podcast or stuff we're trying to showcase, or it's games we're playing, every little bit of input really does go a long way. So please, 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 if you're a, a regular view of our content, reach out to myself, Chris, Spencer, or Geo, and just say, hey, I'd love if you guys did, you know, this kind of gameplay or this, or, you know, showcase, you know, a few movie topics or TV topics or comic books or whatever it is, let us know. Cause that way we can kind of try to mess around with our format a little more towards, uh, at least trying to get one or two things involved in a story or gameplay that are really going to pique your interest. And who knows, it might bring over some of your friends who are interested in some of the same things. Oh, Crazy wow. concept, right? Whoa, <laughs> that's why. Think, um, make that's make sure that's a, you share our adventures. Well, please share, please share. I, I and think, we're, we're out there, so socials, share socials. That's the number one way to get a, our access. That link tree right there. there you go. That link, that link tree is very important. Very Click important. it. Link tree is very, very like important. QR codes, all that stuff QR there. code goes to it. The QR codes. Do you like social media? Yeah, are are you getting excited for 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 the Musk Zuckerberg fight? Click those <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> anyway, that story right, took so, a turn, but yes. So, so those are those are my two stars. And in terms of wishes, I've been kind of looking at the stats on the back end for our views on content. Uh, the podcast is a little bit lower than our video game content. I've noticed because it is longer form. I know it's a little harder to get uh-huh. through. But to those of you guys who've stuck it out, thank you so much for at least taking time to, you know, sit down and at least watch part of the podcast or you know watch it in segments. Where's the I've hope noticed in the, this? The view counts have been going up there on the podcast. What's so your I'm hope seeing, then? Get, What's your hope? My hope is that the view counts are going to keep going up because they're looking pretty go. good right now. It, it was a slow build, but they're looking good. And my second wish is uh, my single player content, the flight sim stuff, has seriously taken off on the channel. We yes. can begin uh, a lot of views. So I'm going to continue trying to push more flight sim content to you guys. Uh, and these guys <laughs> are going to try to do some more single player and multiplayer get that to your eyeballs because yep, yep. it seems like that's yep. what you guys love the most because they're shorter streams we get through the games we you guys love them so we're gonna keep doing some more of that too absolutely yep yep so thank you everybody for hanging out thank you i do i do want to uh oh, yeah. say something plug important yes well no i'm not just only plugging myself here all right of course there's dingustin i'm sure everybody knows <laughs> uh you know the dingustin yep. by at this point right it's the logo right there it's my stuff however i do want to highlight something else over the weekend, I did. Uh, I recorded a podcast episode over with my uh, friend Castro. We've been oh. hanging out a lot over the few mo- past couple months, few months, and uh, I recorded a podcast over at his uh, podcast channel uh, called the Comic Cons Podcast. And we have an episode coming out on Friday. Is when he's planning on putting it out, and so I think it's important for our communities to uh, grow out. Uh, and support each other right he had uh we had this whole talk of where we talked about a couple of comics um check it out and then when i uh, like the first half was me talking about uh a couple comics we went through broke down a particular comic kind of like what we do on comic club uh but then there's also in that second half i talked a lot about what i do uh you know with the dingus den and then of course i also touched on what i do here on red shirts remastered and so uh, I'd really appreciate it if you all could go over and go to YouTube to, and check out the Comic Cons podcast to where, uh, yeah, episode uh, out soon. Looking forward to uh, try to grow this. And this is how uh, not only we grow, but also let other people grow too. You know, it's all about connecting with others. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Spencer, what's the best way to get access to that content over there? You can just click that link that I just posted right there in the. All right, click it down below. Um, comments. Nice. There we go. You right. have to check that out down down below in the chat right there. Find it right there. And make sure you also go check out the Dingus Den for some cool mm-hmm. comic as and always. gaming content as always. As always. And uh, as always. I think that that about wraps it up, right, guys? Yep. Yep. 
All right. Well, we will see you no, right, next Wednesday because I will be out of town and I oh, yeah. am the, the guy who runs the live stream. So next Saturday, we will be back for Red Shirts Remastered. But again, you will possibly see some streams before then here on Twitch, maybe even on YouTube. Who knows? We haven't decided. Uh, but um, yeah, check us out and we're going to wrap it up here. Laters, everybody. Peace and love, everyone. Hey. Bye. Uh, have a good one. <laughs> All right, so I ran a minute ad, ad at the point. end. Yep. Just to have a minute ad run ah, at the end. Okay. Why not, right? Why there not? There go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll like stop the stream right when it says like eight seconds or five seconds or one second even. People get the whole ad. What's this? this is this. Lord of the Rings game ad is what Matthew got. Nice. <laughs> Probably the adventure game, like the mobile. Oh, that mobile. That game mobile game that just came out. Yeah. yeah. No, gods know they won't advertise Gollum now. No, yeah, no, <laughs> gods, no. gods know it all, yeah. Uh, oh, that poor game. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Poor Gollum.